Walter Payton is in the fourth grade, while a running back named Willie Gallimore is helping the Chicago Bears to a 4-0 start. Willie Galt is three years old, while wide receiver Johnny Morris is making plays like this one as the Bears go on to dominate the National Football League. It's a year their hard-nosed tight end Mike Ditka remembers well. His quarterback back then, Billy Wade, passed and ran the team to their last NFL title. 22 years later, another number nine, Jim McMahon, has led the Bears to a 4-0 record again, their best start since that championship season. But when the Bears met the Bucks in the season opener, Tampa surged to a 28-17 lead in the third quarter before Chicago regrouped to win. The Bucks have lost three more since then, despite the brilliant play of running back James Wilder, who leads the league in rushing with 497 yards. Tampa quarterback Steve DeBerg is passing at nearly 60%, but the Bucks have failed to make the big scoring plays, and DeBerg has suffered seven interceptions along the way. The Bucks' million-dollar refugee from the USFL, Steve Young, is waiting for his chance to play, but it probably won't come today when the Bears meet the Bucks in Tampa Bay. Chicago Bears against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. After several days of oppressive heat and humidity, it is a beautiful afternoon for football. We are live at Tampa Stadium in Tampa, Florida, 79 degrees. Light winds at 12 miles per hour. Hello, everybody. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris here at Tampa Stadium. And the Chicago Bears bring in a 4-0 mark against the winless Buccaneers. And as you saw at the top of the show, Mike Dick uh, remembers the last time the Bears went 4-0. That was 63. They went on to win the title, and he said that may be an omen. In fact, the Bears have won five in a row. That's the longest streak in the NFL right now, considering uh, the last game of the year last year. Kevin Butler will kick off for the Bears. You'll notice they are in their dark uniforms. The Buccaneers choosing to wear white at home for the second home game. Leon Bright is the deep man in the end zone, and he will not bring it out. So Tampa Bay will start first down from their own 29, their 20-yard line as we look at number 29, Leon Bright. And the Buccaneers will bring out Steve DeBerg at quarterback. Number 17, James Wilder, the league's leading rusher, number 32. And their U-back, as he's called, a tight end, Jerry Bell, number 82. Carter and House, the wide receivers. George Arno, Steve Corson, Randy Grimes, Sean Farrell, and Ron Heller across the front with the tight end, Jimmy Giles. Giles, who has been murder against the Bears in years past. And Tampa Bay looking for victory number one on the season. And it is Wilder on first down, trying to come off tackle left, and again with that great strength and individual effort, plows for about six yards on the opening play of the game. Mike Singletary, number 50, Otis Wilson, number 55, made the tackle. For the Bears defensively, Mike Hartenstein, Steve McMichael, Dan Hampton, coming along well after his offseason knee surgery, and Richard Dent along the front four. The linebackers, Otis Wilson, Mike Singletary, Wilbur Marshall, still in that spot, formerly held by holdout Al Harris, and the secondary, Richardson and Frazier on the corners, Dave Dewerson for the injured, for the uh, missing, rather, Todd Bell, and Gary Fensick at safety. Pitch out right side for Wilder, and the hole closes up as Singletary was there, along with McMichael. And at the bottom of the stack, Otis Wilson, number 55. A gain of maybe a yard on that play on second and five, so the Bucks will have a third and four. So the Bucks start out right what they do best, and that is give the ball to James Wilder. He either runs or catches passes. As you know, he leads the league in rushing. And uh, the thing is, can they beat a Chicago Bear defense that does not give up run yardage consistently? They'll give you a big play once in a while, but it's tough to run consistently. Steve DeBerg, if to beat the Chicago Bears, is going to have to throw that ball downfield. Wilder with 104 yards against the Lions last week in the losing effort. DeBerg has a man open, couldn't get the ball to him. A big rush by the linebacker, Marshall. Giles, the intended receiver, and he was open. However, DeBerg back, backpedaling furiously with Wilbur Marshall in pursuit. Couldn't get the ball to Giles, so Tampa Bay will have to punt. And Wilbur Marshall will bring uh, cheers from at least 14 people. We learned that he bought, he bought 14 tickets for his family from Titusville, Florida, across on the east coast of the southern state. You know, uh, Tampa Bay had a big chance for a big play there. Frank Garcia, a tremendous punt, and it drives Taylor back inside his 15. A flag is down as he eluded the first attempted 
tackle on the play. And it was Mike Pryor who finally got him. He got away from Craig Curry. And flags are down. Huge punt by Frank Garcia. 56 yards. Garcia, one of the top punters for the last couple of years in the NFL. They may have called it on Mike Richardson. He was the man blocking on that play, hitting from behind. He hit Curry, and it was a very tough call, a very close call. Pat Haggerty, our referee, will give us the word here momentarily. Signal against the Bears. Illegal use of the hands. Number 27, offense on the return. First down. It is Mike Richardson, and let's have a look at what happened here. Right, if you look at the left of your screen, you see Curry coming down, and there's Richardson kind of pushing him from the back, and then he put his hands back and said, I didn't touch him, but he did touch him, didn't he? He pushed him from the back. So the Bears will start inside their 10-yard line with Jim McMahon bringing out the offense. First offensive possession of Chicago. Early minutes, opening period in Tampa Bay. Peyton and Suey shift to the pro set. First down pass play. Straight drop for McMahon. He's going deep for Willie Gall and overthrows him. On the coverage was Jeremiah Castile, number 23. Galt ran by him at about midfield, but only after the ball was well beyond both the receiver and the defender. Peyton and Suey, the starting running backs. Willie Galt joined by Dennis McKinnon, Florida State alumnus, who has lots of friends and family down here. Across the front for the Bears, Covert, Bortz, Hilgenberg, Tom Thayer for the injured Kurt Becker, making his second start at right guard. Keith Van Horn at tackle, and Emery Moorhead the tight end. Second and ten, Chicago Bears inside their ten-yard line. No score. Long count by McMahon. They give us to Suey. And the Bucks respond well. Suey picked up about an extra three yards on individual effort because the Buccaneers defense led by Logan and Davis were on the case. Cannon is the left defensive end, number 78. The talented David Logan on the nose. Ron Holmes, the rookie number one pick on the right side for Tampa Bay. Chris Washington, Jeff Davis, Scott Brantley, and Hugh Green. Green missed a practice this week. We'll talk a little more about that. And Castile and Holt on the corners. David Greenwood, the strong safety refugee from the USFL, and Ivory Sully acquired from the Rams. Three wide receivers for the Bears on third down and five. And a delay, a penalty, or a timeout? Let's wait and see. Timeout is called by Chicago, evidently, as on third and five, Jim McMahon didn't like the look of the Tampa Bay defense. And I think Mike Ditka is wondering, why did you call a timeout? Well, McMahon didn't like the situation. And uh, they obviously feel that the uh, first series is an important one. As you saw, the Bears went for it on the first down. Willie Galt, they went for the bomb, trying to break Tampa Bay's back right off. Well, McMahon with a good effort got them five, but it's third down. We'll be back in a moment. You don't get to the top by looking back. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris back at Tampa Stadium on third and five. McMahon's got the play. They have four wide receivers in. Kind of a rare circumstance for the Bears. Brad Anderson joining him. Uh, and it's Willie Galt on the handoff, but the Bucks were waiting for that. Ron Holmes, the rookie, number 90 from Washington with... Galt at the running back position, an inside handoff, and it got nowhere. And it was Holmes who getting across before Tom Thayer's block. 57 Holmes just came across the line of scrimmage as they handed off to Willie Galt. They wanted some speed around the end, I would say, but Holmes, he stopped it. Good play by Tampa Bay, and it's a key series for the Buccaneers. They get the ball back, they stop the Bears the first time, and I think that's good for their confidence, don't you? Yes, indeed, and Buford will be punting from his end zone against the win. So Leon Bright waiting for it at the 42-yard line of Tampa Bay, the Bucks should wind up with good field position here for their second offensive series. He hits it from the three-yard line, and it takes a Bears bounce and rolls all the way down to about the 20-yard line. A bright let it go, and that turned out to be a mistake in judgment because the ball rolled toward the Bucks goal line, and it turns into a 68-yard punt by Maury Buford. And so instead of having good field position, the Buccaneers will start at their own 20-yard line. Steve DeBerg brings back the Tampa Bay offense. Scoreless football game with 11.34 to play here in the first period. 
the Buccaneers have only three touchdowns. They've been able to control the ball fairly well. They've been throwing a lot of short passes, and of course, with Wilder running the ball. But when they get down near the end zone, they're not able to put the ball in, and this is what the Bird's job ultimately is going to have to be. He has good percentages, but they're not scoring the points. First down, they come out in the wing formation right. Play action pass by the Bird. He's got lots of time. Takes the short man, and that is Wilder out of the backfield for a first down. Singletary on the tackle, a first down Tampa Bay at their own 34-yard line, a 14-yard pickup. And Mike Singletary is complaining to the officials. Now, you see Wilder's 32 comes, delays out of the backfield real late, and it's Singletary on the coverage. Number 50 has to chase uh, James Wilder, who catches another pass. He had 25 going into this game, second in the NFC behind his own teammate, Jerry Bell. It is first down at the 34-yard line of Tampa Bay. Pickup of about two as Wilder tries the left side again. Steve McMichael, number 76, crossed over to make the hit for the Bears. It'll be second and eight. Second and eight. Tampa Bay. Slot formation right. Jerry Bell set up on the wing left, number 82. Carter and House are both set up on the right side, the wide receivers. The bird gets time and hits Carter. Carter gets away from one man and has another Tampa Bay first down. Dewerson made the tackle, but they are in Bears territory at the 43-yard line. A straight four-man rush by the Bears, and you're going to see Carter get the inside position on 21 Les Frazier. Good blocking by the offensive line. He dips to the inside, gets a step on Frazier, and then is finally knocked down as Gerald Carter makes the grab. And he's a happy young man today for a lot of reasons. His wife had a baby this week, named him Gerard, a baby boy. Carter's ninth catch of the season. The wide receivers have not figured in the Tampa Bay offense very much over the first four games. Kevin House, their explosive receiver who scored a touchdown on a bomb in the opening game, has caught only five passes in four games, and Carter had nine coming into this one. DeBerg off quickly to the tight end. Giles and another first down. Good-looking play by Tampa Bay. Dewerson made the tackle, and they're inside the 30 of Chicago. You're right, that was a super play, a little trickery that haven't seen too much from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as the, as the fake off on the counter to Wilder. Otis Wilson is on to Berg, but he can't get there in time as uh, Giles just dipped out there in the flat, took it down the field, and finally brought down by Dewerson. Fumbled the ball out of bounds, but a good play by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on the move. And as you recall, in the first game of the season, they moved the ball very well against Chicago in the first half. In fact, Mike Ditka kept showing the first half of that game to his players because he wanted to run, remind them how Tampa Bay had moved the ball on them. The Berg is three out of four for 50 yards. In Bears territory, again gets time, going for it all in the corner, and it's overthrown. Intended for Kevin House. And the ball way overthrown by DeBerg as House had his man beaten in the corner. Richardson and Dewerson both tracking the speedy Kevin House. I think that's obviously a key to Tampa Bay's chances today is throwing the ball to Kevin House. He's a deep threat that complements James Wilder, and they haven't really made use of House when you only have six passes. As Lehman Bennett told us yesterday, he said, we've got to strike the Bears in more ways than just with James Wilder. And sometimes it's difficult when you run a one-back offense. <laughs> yes, it is. And uh, Kevin House uh, feeling, uh, you know, really they should be throwing deep and more often. Here's Wilder trying the left side. Good pursuit. Good work by Marshall and Singletary to stop James Wilder as Marshall fought off a block to make the initial contact. He certainly did. It was Sean Farrell, a big lineman out in front of him, 62. And uh, Wilbur Marshall just fought the block off, number 58, and made the play. Coming on very strong is Mr. Marshall. Loss of a yard, it'll be third and 11. Chatting with Kevin House, he indicated that he thought that uh, maybe Steve DeBerg was looking over his shoulder a little bit at the presence of Steve Young and that uh, was throwing safer passes and <laughs> was hoping that maybe they'd be throwing the ball downfield to him. Well, they've tried it a couple of times. And up the middle intended for Jerry Bell. Might have been tipped away by Otis Wilson. 
Wilson looked like he got a hand on it as the receiver, Jerry Bell, number 82, was behind him and had the pass cleared Wilson. That would have been a touchdown. It certainly would have. It was within an inch of being a touchdown because Otis Wilson had the coverage on him all the way. And Bell had gone in motion and then back and and uh, Otis Wilson was reacting back and forth. Wilson is 55, and then he just puts his hand up there, but he had uh, an open path the rest of the way had he made the grab. Jerry Bell with 25 catches in the first four games. As you commented, Ian Wilder, 1-2 in the NFL and pass receiving. Risher is holding for the field goal try by Donald Igwebuike, the Nigerian from Clemson. And it is wide to the right, wide to the right. Now, this has been the pattern of the Tampa Bay Bucks in the first four games. They make good things happen until they get to scoring territory, and then they come up empty. We'll be right back. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris at Tampa Stadium. A beautiful afternoon in Florida. A nice light breeze, something that uh, hasn't been prevalent around here in the last few days. Let's take a look at some scores from around the National Football League elsewhere. Detroit leading Green Bay 3-0 in the first period. Buffalo out in front of Indianapolis, 7 to zip, first quarter. And Cleveland, likewise, over New England. First down, Chicago, from their own 29-yard line, following the missed 46-yard field goal attempt by Donald Iguibuike. This is Peyton, his first carry. And he is met at the corner by David Greenwood, number 30, the new strong safety from Wisconsin and the USFL and uh, had nowhere to go. What a play by Greenwood, because he had a big lineman, 57, Tom Thayer on him. He beat off the block and made the tackle. Greenwood is also on the special teams. He says he didn't like the special teams so, so much to me. He didn't like that too well. But he says he loves to play defense in the regular part of the game. Well, that first game that he was referring to, too, against the Chicago Bears in Chicago was a real hot afternoon, and he made his debut with the Bucks having played his USFL season, wound up with 100-degree temperatures, special teams, and a full day of duty. That's strong safety. Off to Peyton on the screen pass. Peyton is met after a pickup of about nine by Jeff Davis and Jeremiah Castile. Davis 58, Castile 23. That'll leave a third down and a long two. Well, Walter has not carried from scrimmage yet, I don't believe. He gained only seven yards uh, last week. Has he carried from scrimmage just, yet today? Just the first down play here. Oh, the first down yeah. play, right. He's had one carry. And, of course, uh, that is counter to what the Chicago Bears have done over the years. They have become a much more of a multiple offense. They have scored 136 points. They lead the NFL in scoring. And how long has it been since the Chicago Bears have led the NFL in scoring? And it's been with the passing game mainly. Third and two. Play action fake to Suey. McMahon eludes Cannon. Gets the pass off incomplete. Looks like he just wanted to unload. Good coverage downfield. The tight end, Moorhead, the intended receiver, covered by the linebacker, number 51, Chris Washington. So the Buccaneers again stop the Bears on two consecutive series. And I guess the question can be asked, are the Buccaneers like those pirates who sneak up on you at night? and try and steal one. They're 0-4, the Bears 4-0. The speculation they might look ahead to next week's game against San Francisco. So the Buccaneers so far at their most piratical. Buford will punt, standing at his 22-yard line. Leon Bright is the deep man at the Buccaneers' 10-yard line. Buford had a 68-yarder on his first try, getting a bounce of about 30 yards. And he hits this one real well. Right from the 11 yard line. Over the 15, buried there. First contact by Ron Rivera, number 59, and Dennis Gentry, number 29. A 53 yard punt, a five yard return. The Bucks will start from their 15 when we return. 642 remaining first quarter. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris, and there's uh, the man uh, that they hope will be the man of the hour here in Tampa Bay, Steve Young, signed on September 10th to six one-year contracts for a bunch of money. And he's got that flak jacket on, you notice, Johnny. I don't know how much flak there's going to be on the sideline this afternoon, <laughs> but uh, Steve's ready for combat. First down to Berg, flares it out quickly to Kevin House. Richardson ties him up, but House works his way up for a gain of eight yards on the play. Second and two. Five-year man from Southern Illinois. And you can see Richardson gives him a little bit of room. He kicks the hitch only four yards down the field and is able to turn upfield before the defender gets there. And that gives 
is your first sign that the defender was a little bit too far off as the Buccaneers get almost eight yards, and I think they'd take eight yards on first down any time. Kevin House is going to have to be a factor in this game if Tampa Bay is going to win. Second and two. Buccaneers, wild with a lone setback. Slot formation left. Bell set up on the wing right. Bears again without much of a rush, and good defensive play by Richardson, intended for Gerald Carter, number 87. And it was Richardson getting a paw on the ball and batting it down to leave a third and two for the Buccaneers. Richardson last week ran one back 90 yards. He got an interception, almost had a touchdown within a half a yard, but that was good coverage by Richardson. And you see the way the Bear defensive backs, when they have to move over the cornerbacks to go from one side of the field to the other, depending on how the, the Buccaneers put out their wide receivers and such. Third down Tampa Bay, in motion comes Bell. Short drop and quick pass, incomplete. The tight end, Giles, I believe, the intended receiver. Uh, Bell and Giles were both there together. One turned in, one turned out. And the pass incomplete. So again, a similar pattern as uh, DeBerg unable to keep the offense moving for Tampa Bay, and they will have to punt. Frank Garcia. And the deep man for the Bears, Ken Taylor. Short. Not a good kick by the usually reliable Garcia. Got a Tampa Bay bounce, however. And will come down at the 38-yard line of the Chicago Bears. A 39-yarder for Garcia from the University of Arizona, a native of Tucson. And out comes Jim McMahon. And what a first four weeks of the season it has been for Jim McMahon. Much of the country getting to see him on a Thursday night when he came back with three touchdown passes to beat the Minnesota Vikings and then a rout of the Washington Redskins last Sunday afternoon. The number one rated quarterback in the National Football League completing 64% of his passes. In that complicated rating system, he stands at 117.3. Sounds like anything over 100 would be a good number in that rating. Nobody's ever been able to really figure that out too well. McMahon gets lots of time, and Moorhead makes the catch. It'll be a first down near midfield for the Bears, an 11-yard pickup on the play. And you talk about catching the ball under duress. Number 58, Jeff Davis is right there waiting for Moorhead. He goes, he watches Jim McMahon's eyes and almost put the battered away, but it was a perfect pass, and Moorhead hung on to the ball. First down for the Chicago Bears, and I believe it's their first first down of the game. Jeff Davis hurt his shoulder against Detroit last week, but uh, back in action today. He's a tough one and a good one out of Clemson. 30 tackles in the first four games. Pitch out for Suey. Suey gets a block, takes it upfield, and picks up about four. And it was Chris Washington with David Greenwood, 51 and 30, making the tackle for Tampa Bay. Chris Washington from Julian High School in Chicago played his college football at Iowa State, the number five choice of the Buccaneers in 1981. And now the rookie Irvin Randall gives Washington a breather. Randall, their number two pick from Baylor this year. Four yard gain for Suey, second and six, no score at Tampa Stadium, 459 remaining first period. Dewey, good hole off the right side, will be short of the first down by about a yard as Hugh Green, number 53, made the stop. We talked earlier about uh, Hugh Green, a bit of a controversy this week. He missed practice on Wednesday, attended the meeting in the morning, and then just skipped practice and showed up the next day and chatted with Lehman Bennett. And uh, when we talked to him here on Friday, he said, well, it's between me and the club. I won't comment on why I skipped practice, but the speculation centered around an article last week that appeared on United Press indicating that uh, Green was unhappy with the style of defense under the defensive coordinator, Doug Shively, that didn't allow him to freelance and be more of an individual. But he would, uh, would not say that that was the reason why he skipped practice. Flag is down on the play and a delay call against the Bears. Play of game, offense. On their third and one, that'll drive them back and make it now a third and six. That does change the situation, doesn't it? As, as the Bears seem to be 
having some problems getting untracked here. There's McMahon's called one timeout, had one delay of, of game, which she hasn't had this year so far. Carl Morgan comes in defensively for the Buccaneers, number 67. He had a big game against the Lions last week. And Craig Curry, number 31, comes into the secondary. And Mike Pryor, number 24, as it's turned into a passing down. The Bears have, again, the four wide receivers. Galt goes in motion from the running back spot. McMahon incomplete and a little miscommunication there. McMahon took a pretty good hit from Logan after he released the ball. Marjoram and McKinnon were out on the right side, but nowhere near where the pass landed. Well, Jeremiah Castillo covered McKinnon very well on that play, and uh, there was a miscommunication, and McMahon had to get rid of the ball because of the pressure, and so far the Bucks are really shut Chicago down. Buford into punt again. Leon Bright waiting for it at the 10-yard line. Leon Bright, the veteran return man, last week uh, had a rare fumble on a punt return that cost the Bucks dearly against Detroit. It's only the second time that uh, that he's ever ever lost a fumble on a punt return in his entire career. He's only fair caught the ball once. That one he won't even have to look at it through the end zone. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will have the ball again starting from their own 20 yard line. 356 remaining first quarter. We've got a scoreless football game in Tampa Bay. This is the uh, tenth year for the Tampa Bay Bucks in the National Football League, and uh, just their second home game this season. They got walloped by Minnesota, 31 to 16, in the first home game, and have lost three on the road. Looking for victory number one, and the fans here uh, in good force today. More than 50,000 in attendance at Tampa Stadium today. Wilder. Trying the right side, gets a couple, and Mike Hartenstein, number 73, made the tackle for the Chicago Bears. Tackle by Mike Hartenstein. The Bucks, when we were in their dressing room the other day, uh, had some support from a local elementary school. I had a big kind of a poster up on the wall. It was real cute. It said uh, that those kids at uh, Neil Armstrong Elementary School in Port Charlotte, Florida, wanted bear meat for Sunday dinner. And then there were... A lot of individual messages from members of the sixth grade class at that school. So they've got their fans and their support. Flag down as Wilder slips trying to cut back, and he'll get very little of anything on the play. Let's see who the flag is against. Mike Singletary indicates that it should be against Tampa Bay. We'll see whether referee Pat Haggerty agrees, and he does. An offside call signaled against the Bucks on the second in long eight. You're really right about it being a beautiful day. It must be 75, 80 degrees. It's cool. It was 90 degrees yesterday. About 50,000 fans out here. Perfect day for football. Everybody's a little lethargic. The Offside. crowd hasn't had too much to cheer about yet. Two. Offense declined. Third down. Steve Corson, the left guard, number 72, is offside, and the Bears decline it to leave a third and a long third eight. eight with the ball at the 21-yard uh, line. Yes, I think both, uh, the, the, of course, the Bears are happy to have this cooler weather. The Buccaneers who practice in this heat all of the time probably preferred uh, hot, humid days like it's been all week here. Slot formation right on third down. Three wide receivers in. Theo Bell joining Carter and House. The pass for House. He's got the first down. And hit immediately by Leslie Frazier. But the Bucks go deep on third and long and have a first down at their own 45-yard line. 25-yard gain. And a super play by DeBerg. Otis Wilson, 50 finders, five, is really bearing down on him. He gets the ball off. House with the little quick post inside had put a good fake on Leslie Frazier. Gets the first down. And the Bucks get out of their own territory, or at least deep in their own territory, up to the 46-yard line. Kevin House, who is the Buccaneers' all-time leading receiver. Good speed, about 4-5. DeBerg now 5 of 9 for 83 yards, so House gets his wish to catch one a little deeper than he's been getting in the first four games of the season. DeBerg gets time again, and he goes way deep down the sideline, intended for Carter incomplete. Good coverage. Two Bears were there, Fensick and Richardson. Well, let's take you to Brent Musburger in New York for an NFL update. 
Tim, the Green Bay Packers gave up a field goal to the Detroit Lions, and they came back and got this touchdown. Lynn Dickey, who is playing quarterback, hits Eddie Lee Ivory, two yards, 7-3. Back to Tim and Johnny. The Packers at 1-3 and three coming into the game. Lynn Dickey starting this afternoon after benching himself last week as the starter. And that game of interest to fans around the Central Division. It is second and ten. Tampa Bay here. This is Wilder. Wilder trying to go off tackle right. Took it wide and wound up with about a five-yard pickup inside Bears territory at the 49-yard line. Fensick and Richardson, 45 and 27, made the tackle there. The Bears were in their 46 defense that time and had it pretty much jammed up, but it was just a great little dip inside and then outside by Wilder to get the five yards. Now, last week, Tampa Bay gained only 2.9 yards on first down when Wilder was carrying and uh, I think so far the stats are a little bit better today, but if you get five or six yards a pop, uh, your offense is in much better shape. So now they have third a and third and five. Bell goes wide to the right, rolling that way as DeBerg. DeBerg throws it short up the middle to Giles. Giles has a first down inside the 40-yard line of Chicago. Otis Wilson made the tackle. Jimmy Giles, the 30-year-old veteran from Alcorn State, he's always been a bear herder. And as you see, DeBerg is going out of the pocket, getting himself a little time, and you're going to see, there's Giles, but look at a Carter right behind him. He was even more open than Giles would. He had two to choose from, took the short man, but still got the first down as DeBerg uh, on a little bit of a rollout. Let's see if they try and do that. He's not considered a very fast quarterback, but maybe they're going to try and have a moving pocket to upset the Bears a little bit. Rookie Calvin McGee comes in for Jerry Bell. First down at the Bear 39. This is Wilder, got a good block, and Wilder picks up eight, maybe nine yards out the left side. Leslie Frazier forced him out, but a flag is down on the play. Flag down at the 35. Uh, Wilder got outside of Richard Dent that time, but it looks like it's going to be against Tampa Bay. Somebody may have done something a little bit illegal in that offensive line. We'll find out in a hurry here. No score in the ball game. Time winding down first quarter. We have holding number 73 offense. Ron Hiller, the right tackle, second year man from Penn State, and he's a little upset at the call. Well, he shouldn't be holding. He was on the other side of the play. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. It was quite a ways uh, yeah, from that's where Wilder was headed. Which you call an unnecessary penalty. 37 seconds left in the first quarter, and now the Bucks backed up to the 49-yard line of Chicago. Lots of time for DeBerg. Gets it off to Kevin House. He made the catch, dropped immediately by Dave Dewerson. And it's going to be ruled incomplete. House unable to hold on once the hit was made by Dewerson. You mentioned Steve DeBerg. You talk about a quarterback that gets on the hot spot. He was in San Francisco when Montana came along. He, he was in Denver when Elway came along, was traded to Tampa Bay, and now comes along Steve Young. We've talked about that with him uh, at the beginning of the season, and uh, he really is, he has quite a good spirit about it, but I'm sure that he, he hears the footsteps behind him, especially when his team is 0-4. So much pressure is put on the quarterback to be the primary performer. DeBerg, and that is complete. That was right on the money. Giles making the catch. Coverage from Singletary. And a perfect strike, but well short of the first down yardage. He got it up over the original line of scrimmage. It'll leave third and a long eight. Okay, watch number 50. You get a key to the defense here. 50 is Singletary. He's running with Giles, who goes down and to the outside. And it's tough coverage for a middle linebacker. And uh, Giles uh, makes the grab as the quarter ends. That's the end of the first quarter. So at the end of the first quarter at Tampa Stadium, we've got a scoreless football game. The Buccaneers have possession in Bears territory at the 38. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris back at Tampa Stadium. A third down and a long eight yards for the Buccaneers. Steve DeBerg brings them out. They're in Bears territory at the 38-yard line. No score. Early motion by Giles. Flags everywhere. DeBerg's pass is batted down. And it was Tyrone Keyes, number 98, in at left end for Hartenstein. Now the question is, who moved first? 
flags everywhere. If it's against the Buccaneers, this is just typical of their play over the first four games. They get something going, Johnny, and then something bad happens. They wind up going backwards. It looked like one of the receivers broke a little bit too soon, but then the Bears are offsides too, so... Uh, Gary Fensick uh, can't understand that one. He was saying that one of the receivers jumped, went down field. It was the receiver on this side yeah, of the ball. Giles, Giles did, but uh, whether or not a bear had preceded Giles or not is uh, open to question. The officials indicate maybe that's the case. Now there's a discussion here. Pat Hag Haggerty, number 40, is the referee. Walt Peters, number 44, is the line judge. So that would be his call, LJ, line judge. Offside, both teams, That's what offset, I, yeah. replay the down. That's probably the correct call. Well, we'll see uh, what we can show you on videotape. There's Giles and there's Keyes. Now, it looked like Giles came first and Keyes went over, but Keyes was over before the ball was snapped. So we've got a, a third down and a long eight all over again, as Mike Dicka says, well, it could have been worse. <laughs> right? <laughs> and Lehman Bennett says things couldn't be worse. Well, you know, this is such a typical situation for the Bucks in the early going. Lehman Bennett has never been owned for in his pro career as a head coach, and he's trying to adjust to this notion and uh, try and get a win up on yep. the scoreboard. The bird gets time down the middle for Giles, well covered. No opportunity to catch that ball with both Fensick and the linebacker Wilbur Marshall uh, taking a long route back there. Make it Singletary, pardon me, Singletary. And right now, let's get an update on the San Francisco game from Brent Musburger. Well, Tim, you won't believe this, but Atlanta sends nine men after Joe Montana. He picks up the blitz. There's no one out there on Roger Craig. 46-yard touchdown. Niners lead by seven. Hey, Tim and Johnny, looks to me like the Bears are lethargic today down in Tampa. I think they missed their wake-up call this morning, Brent, and we'll, uh, we'll comment on that a little further as we watch this punt. Uh, what happened? Uh, well, let's watch the punt. Then we'll tell you what happened last night to the Chicago Bears as Garcia's punt will go through the end zone and out. Uh, we uh, happened, our CBS crew, to be staying at the same hotel as the Chicago Bears here in Tampa, and two college soccer teams playing in a tournament here were uh, celebrating either victory or defeat or both. Well, well, all night they were well celebrating. the early hours. <laughs> And I know that uh, from two to four, uh, I didn't get any sleep. And apparently a lot of the Bears didn't either. And several of them got up and uh, hollered out at the boys on the beach and complained. But I guess uh, Bear players, being not so far out of college themselves, uh, were understanding enough to not uh, go out and, and make it any tougher on those youngsters. But I, no doubt they were disturbed. And I think part of it has to be, no matter what any coach says or can do, the Bears have had four good games in a row, and they've got to be looking towards San Francisco a little bit. It has to be a factor. Calvin Thomas in at fullback for Chicago, number 33. They give us to Peyton, and Peyton, nowhere to go, gets about two, maybe three on his own. But excellent defensive work by the front of the Bucks defense with Davis and Washington, the linebackers, coming up to make the tackle. And you know what has been typical of the Chicago Bears so far this season is the fact that they have started several games out on a kind of a lethargic note. And all of a sudden, it's been a big play. One week, it was uh, McMahon coming in and throwing the touchdown pass to Galt. One Another week, it was the Willie Galt's kickoff return. Earlier in the season, it was uh, Peyton on some big runs. And then they triggered. So far, they have not triggered today. Last week, they trailed Washington 10-0 at this point in the game and scored 31 points in the second quarter. But not that way. McMahon intended for Peyton just uh, badly off the mark and good coverage again by the Bucks on the right side. Peyton really had nowhere to go had he caught the ball as they were reading it well. Brantley was out there right in front of him. So it is third down and a long eight for Chicago at their own 22-yard line. You know, and asking the Buccaneers about the heat, yes, they would have preferred to have a nice hot day like they've practiced in, and it's been a, uh, been a break for the Bears to have this kind of cool afternoon weather here, cool by Tampa standards in the 70s. But uh, so far, uh, they just have looked very sluggish. Reitman has come in at tight end, number 80, for Chicago. In motion goes Marjoram, number 82. Third down play. Pass complete and dropped. Will it be an incompletion or a fumble? Marjoram was the receiver. And we're waiting for a signal. 
Washington got the ball for Tampa Bay. And it's going to be Tampa Bay ball. There's Washington. He made the hit on Marjoram and grabbed the ball. And Marjoram uh, out of motion there is wide open. Would have had the first down, but here comes Washington with the hit. He got crunched from both sides. Boy, did they. Hugh Green was in on it, too, and they bolted that ball loose. And Tampa Bay has recovered. That's uh, typical of Tampa Bay Buccaneer defensive football. Give you the short pass and come up and bang you. And that's what they did to Marjoram. Chris Washington from Julian High School in Chicago. And I'm sure he enjoyed that a little extra specially. I bet his family did back in Chicago, too. First down from the Bears 30. Let's see what the Berg can do. The pass is complete to Wilder. And he is down, got up and ran, but he was hit by Singletary. And they will spot it back at that point after a gain of three yards. It'll be second and seven at the 26-yard line of the Chicago Bears. Uh, ironically, it shows you how little things mean a lot. That time, if the pass had been better, Wilder would have caught it in stride and would have had a big game. But the pass was low, and he had to dive for it and uh, still got some yardage out of it. But uh, a little bit better pass, and they would have had a big play. So it'll be second and seven. Scoreless football game, 13 minutes, 13 seconds remaining in the first half. In motion goes Bell. The give us to Wilder. Wilder, good reaction by Richardson. Wilder had the initial hole, a good block off tackle. Excellent work by Richardson to come up and make the tackle after a gain of maybe a yard. Richardson, number 27, the third-year man from Arizona State. You talk about a play that it should have been more successful for Tampa Bay. Some great individual efforts stopped that because it was set up, and they had Heller, the tackle, pull in uh, with the block on Singletary, but uh, there were a lot of other jerseys around that came in with a good play there, but the Tampa Bay had a, an excellent play set up on that one. William Perry had made his first appearance defensively for the Bears. He now goes off, and Keyes comes on at left defensive end. Michaels had played outside for a play or two with Perry at tackle. Third down. Let's see what Blitz. they can do in this circumstance. The blitz is on. He sails it up for Giles and makes the catch. And a first down at the four-yard line. Fensick made the tackle for Chicago. DeBerg delivers the goods. 23-yard gain, first and goal from the four. Oh, yes, they are throwing downfield this week as the Bears came with the blitz. The defensive back on the outside all came down to the fact that 45 at the top of your screen, Gary Fensick had to cover Giles man for man out there. And the pass, even though it floated a little bit, it was high. And Fensick makes the tackle, but not before Giles makes the grab. And Steve DeBerg, a happy young man, as the Buccaneers have a chance to take the lead. Well, you got a pull for this nine-year veteran from San Jose State. We've commented that in three different circumstances. He's had the uh, young quarterback behind with a, a lot of hullabaloo, and now it's Steve Young. DeBerg would love to get them into the end zone. Play action to the corner. Incomplete, intended for Carter. Good coverage by Richardson, and DeBerg threw that one away. It'll be second and goal. Well, you know, the past couple of games, Tampa Bay's been down at the three, the five-yard line. They haven't been able to punch it over by handing it to uh, Wilder. So it looked like there was a little different strategy. Throw the ball on first down, and that's what they did. They've only scored three touchdowns in their last 14 quarters of play. Offense has just been stalled and stalled and stalled. The Berg is 9 of 18 in this game, 131 yards. And we played just a little more than a quarter. Second and goal. Wild with a lone setback. Long count. Short drop. Intended, I believe, for Carter again. Flag down. De Berg took quite a shot from Wilbur Marshall coming from the right side. Or Keys make it. It might have been, uh, no, Keys, I'm sorry, it was the one who tipped the ball. And De Berg slow to get up. I believe it was Marshall who got the hit on on uh, De Berg. The, the ball way I was saw it originally. We cannot have pass interference. Well, there's Pat Haggerty saying the ball was tipped, and that was uh, Tyrone Keyes who got the hand on it. It looks like he might have gotten hit in the head from the, the way they reacted. It was just a quick pass. You'll see 98 Keyes bat the ball away. He didn't get hit. Uh, he got hit low, 
unless his head bounced off the turf or something. Yeah, he took that right in the midsection as Marshall came free, and so DeBerg being attended to. 11.45 remaining in the first half, and we are still scoreless with a third and goal at the four-yard line. The four, DeBerg on the sidelines. Apparently had the wind knocked out of him. Alan Risher is the quarterback, number seven from LSU and the USFL in his first year with the Bucks. And the give is to Wilder. Wilder dipsy doodles and gets to about the two-yard line. Dewerson came up and forced the play, and Wilder took it inside on good effort, picked up about two yards. It'll be fourth and goal from the two-yard line. And on comes the field goal unit to the booze of the crowd. And it was Dave Dewerson who got across. Otis Wilson turned it in, and Dewerson, 22, comes up there and makes the first hit and then a bunch of bears, but Tampa Bay did not push it in. They'll have to settle for the field goal. Risher will hold, the ball being spotted at the nine-yard line, a 19-yard try from the hash mark by Donald Igwe-Wike from Clemson. Igwe-Wike is six of nine on the season and now moves it to seven of ten. So the Buccaneers break on top with 10.56 remaining in the first half. Tampa Bay three, Chicago Bears nothing. Chicago Bears Super Bowl dreams die in San Francisco. They'll seek revenge when they visit the 49ers next Sunday on CBS Sports. Well, there's our action next Sunday here on CBS. Doubleheader day, starting with the NFL today and followed by one of these games in your area, Minnesota at Green Bay, Detroit at Washington, St. Louis at Philadelphia. It all starts at 12.30 Eastern time, and our doubleheader game features the Chicago Bears out at San Francisco against the Super Bowl champs. The kickoff is taken by Willie Galt, three yards deep, and he brings it upfield. Galt, only one man to beat, and got to the 31-yard line before Craig Curry, number 31, put the stop on him. Only the kickoff man, Igwe Buike, was waiting back up at midfield. Well, they're not afraid to kick to Willie Galt, and they should be after last week and the tremendous speed that he has. He got some good blocking by the horseman up front, breaks a tackle here, and it's Curry was the only man that was going to stop him unless the kicker stopped him, and the, the odds were against that. 36-yard return has the Bears first down at their own 31-yard line, and last week, of course, Galt went 99 against Washington, the third longest kickoff return in Chicago Bear history, and that really turned that game around. High formation. Peyton picked up about four yards on first down for the Bears, close to the 35-yard line. Steve DeBerg, uh, medical report, is, uh, as we suspected, just had the wind knocked out of him. A tremendous jarring hit by Wilbur Marshall right in the midsection. So we expect him to return as you see Steve Young and Alan Risher, the quarterback club, all being sympathetic with him there. They've had a few of those shots themselves. Calvin Thomas is in now as the up back in front of Peyton. 33. Thomas shifts up to the wing on second and five. Now in motion. Peyton, flag down. Peyton gets the first down yardage, but it looks like it will be called back as Holmes, number 90, and Sully, number 44, put the hit on Peyton. Walter Peyton uh, didn't gain too many yards last week, but aside from the fact that the passing game was going so well, Walter still is plagued by sore ribs right up in the upper part of the ribs, and every time he gets hit, it gets hurt again, and he has to take Novocaine shots. So there's Illegal a... Illegal motion, number 83. That's offense. against the Chicago Bears, against Willie Galt moving too soon. So that's another reason that Peyton hasn't been carrying the ball as much. But it looked like from the formations we saw in the first two plays that maybe Mike Ditka has said, hey, maybe we ought to try and run that ball and let's get this game into perspective. As you look at the scores here, Indianapolis 14, Buffalo 7, that's second quarter game. San Francisco 7-3 to three over Atlanta. And that's it for right now because we come down to a second and 10 situation for the Bears. George Wansley scored the Indianapolis touchdown against Buffalo. Second and 10. McMahon up the middle. It's complete. Thomas, Calvin Thomas, number 33. And a gain of maybe six yards on the play. Let's see where the spot is. It'll turn into a seven-yard pickup. 
Tampa Bay has been blitzing a lot in previous games, but they haven't blitzed all that much today. And I was talking to Jim McMahon yesterday. He said, I hope they blitz because he loves to check off, call audibles, take advantage of blitzes. Now, so far, Tampa Bay's strategy has not been to blitz too much. They're going with a 3-4 or sometimes the four-man front in the passing situation. So we'll see how that develops. Third and a long two. They've got Andy Frederick in as an extra blocker. And now another McMahon timeout. doesn't like the look of that Bucks defense and calls timeout. The <laughs> second one in this half. Look. And uh, Mike Ditka not thrilled with that at all. They're down to one here in a 3-0 game with 8.51 to go in the first half. You don't want to surrender timeouts. And they have only one remaining. So uh, things are out of sync, as Joe Gibbs put it for Washington last week. This week, they're out of sync for the Chicago Bears. With this time out on the field, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York for another NFL update. Well, Tim, the Packers so far have dominated the Detroit Lions. Here's Jesse Clark from six yards out. And now it is 17-3, Green Bay over Detroit. Back to Tim and Johnny. Green Bay and Detroit. Well, of course, Detroit off to such a good start at 3-1. And, one. and uh, the Packers, a lot of people think, are maybe a better team than the Lions. And they're at 1-3. and three, So that's a big development in the NFC Central. Well, the Lions' uh, record is 3-1, and one, but... If you look at their defensive statistics and offensive statistics, they, they don't look like a 3-1 team. I'm not saying they're not, but we'll see what happens in that game. I want to remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll have Brent and Irv Cross to bring you up to date on all of the scores and highlights from around the NFL this afternoon. And, and a look at how some NFL players, both past and present, are helping the Mexican earthquake relief effort. That's all coming up at halftime. We've got 8.51 to play in our first half here at Tampa Stadium. Third down and two for the Chicago Bears. And this is a big play for the Bears. Big play. Good shot to Suey. Suey has the first down. Suey over the 45 to the 46 yard line. Good block by Walter Payton. Castile, the cornerback, making the stop, and Logan got a piece of the action, and there's an injured Buccaneer down. As you see, it's Payton blocking for Suey on this one. Andre Frederick comes out and makes a good block, too. There is the Payton block on uh, Castile, I believe it was, and Suey turned up the field and gets the first down for Chicago. Walter Payton, as you said, we have a man down on the field. Ivory Sully is the injured Buccaneer player. Sully came over from the Rams in a trade. Seven-year man from Delaware. He is uh, clearly in some pain as the training staff works on Sully. And he's played pretty well for Tampa Bay. He's made some key tackles. He'll really jolt you. He's a hitter. He had 20 tackles coming into this game. And happy to get a chance to be a full-time starter, something he was unable to achieve with the Rams in his career there. Eight thirty-seven to go, first half. Bucks lead it three to nothing. Wobble. Well, we're happy to see Ivory Sully on his feet being assisted off the field, but apparently all right. And uh, kind of a strange football game so far, and certainly a listless Bears team at 4-0. Some people expected maybe they'd be flat today and looking ahead to San Francisco, but that always sounds like a cliche to me. <laughs> uh, if you're 4-0 and the other guys are 0-4, it should be easy to get up. Yes, uh, they, they look like they're a little bit flat, but you got to give some uh, credit to Tampa Bay. The team has played very well on defense, and... Uh, I think uh, this drive here is going to be very important, Tim, because the Bears this is the first time the Bears have showed some semblance of moving down the field. They really haven't opened up their offense. No, they, they really haven't. haven't. Uh, that's, that's been a big difference. Uh, McMahon hasn't looked super sharp. A couple of uh, passes a little off the mark. But uh, again, as you say, credit to the Buccaneers defensively. But the Buccaneers offense has been uh, similar to what it's been through the first four games. They've made some good plays, moved down the field, and uh, so far have only been able to come up with the one field goal. And they were uh, first and goal from the four-yard line, had to settle for three points. Now let's see what Chicago does here. They are at their own 47-yard line. Play action. Good heat on McMahon, and he just got it away, and they're going to call him for deliberately grounding that football. 
The charge was led by the blitzing linebacker Washington and number 78 John Cannon, who Lehman Bennett told us has been one of the most effective of the Bucks defenders through the first four games. Number 78 from William and Mary. Intentional grounding. And you also lose the down on that. So the Bears will have a second down situation as McMahon was under pressure. Cannon from the uh, outside, from the inside. Washington from the outside. Cannon from the inside. And uh, McMahon obviously dumped it off to avoid the sack. So it's a, a good call. And now the Bears are in a uh, long passing situation. It'll be second down and 22 yards to go from their own 35-yard line. And you can see that the, the Bears uh, have not had good field position and have uh, done literally nothing with what they've had. Good protection this time. Down the middle, and it's intercepted by Greenwood, tackled by McKinnon. And again, either miscommunication or simply a bad chuck by McMahon. McKinnon was in the vicinity, but that's being kind. That ball was 10 yards past him. That was simply a case of uh, McMahon overthrew McKinnon. You'll see 85 coming into the picture. He just overthrows him, and uh, Greenwood, who is down on the deeper coverage, comes in with the interception. And there's one thing that is, uh, was obvious on that play and a few other passing situations. The Bear wideouts are getting doubled a little bit. Greenwood, the strong safety, acquired in a deal from New Orleans who held his rights. He had been in the USFL. They installed him immediately as a starter first week of the season. And uh, Greenwood uh, loved to see that one coming because there was nobody to impede him from making the intercept. So DeBerg back in action after being clobbered by Marshall on first down. is complete for the tight end, Giles, and Singletary, the man beaten on the play, catches up to make the tackle. But the Buccaneers have a first down at Chicago's 41-yard line. And DeBerg had his choice of two here. Pretty good pass. Giles is 88. He's going to the left. You screen. See Carter, 87, right behind him. He also had a step on his man. And Giles is finally knocked down by Mike Singletary as the Buccaneers are taking some advantages of the Bear defense, getting a lot of situations where tight ends and uh, receivers are getting uh, coverage by linebackers in Buddy Ryan's deceiving type of defense. Let's put it that way. Two turnovers by the Bears in this first half. They trail 3-0. Give this to Wilder. Wilder oh. stacked up behind the line of scrimmage. Oh. William Perry, number 72, the Bears' number one pick and make the ball carrier Ron Springs in for his first appearance in the game, acquired from Dallas on waivers. Well, Ron awesome Springs play. just had about 325 pounds land right on top of him, full force, number 72. Number 20, Ron Springs. Lehman Bennett said he would try to get him into the game five or six plays a half to give Wilder a little relief. Wilder has been a busy man. He's accustomed to being that. They'd like to keep him healthy. Second and 11. Pass for Giles. Good catch by Giles. Now the ball is loose, but it has been ruled dead, and it'll be a first down Tampa Bay at Chicago's 22-yard line. A 20-yard pass play to Berg to Jimmy Giles. Now watch for Giles. He's number 88. He goes straight down the field. There's Singletary on the coverage. And Mike Richardson comes off the coverage. That was Marshall. And he just beat it straight with what you call an arrow, the tight end right down the field. And it was beautifully laid in by DeBerg. He gets a lot of credit for that because he had to get it right up over Marshall and not too far down the field, and it was perfect. Giles, sixth catch of this first half, 99 yards. Slot formation left for the Buccaneers. First down at Chicago's 21-yard line. Short drop by DeBerg in the corner. He's got a man open. Touchdown. Kevin House. Well, we've seen this young man burn the Bears before, and DeBerg got it downfield to him this time, Johnny. It was Mike Richardson on the coverage. And watch what happens here. I think he believes that he's going to go to the out, out pattern there as he watched the quarterback and got fooled. And it was into the end zone. Touchdown for Kevin House. And he said he was going to be a factor in this game yesterday. He told us he was, and he was right. Here's a, a miscue. 
Well, Igwe Bike gets to carry the ball, or at least lie on it, back at his own 34-yard line. And a missed point after on the bad snap. The punt set, the uh, uh, kick center is Ken Kaplan, number 79. So a miscue by the Bucks cost them a point. Let's see it again. It's a little high. Boy, I'd say a little <laughs> bit high, wouldn't you? <laughs> I would say hey. his fellow uh, countryman Elijah Wan couldn't have caught that one. No, I don't think so. Holder on the play. <laughs> oh boy, completely fooled Risher. Now he could have tried to maybe scoop this one up because of the fact that the ball's a dead ball. You can't uh, not lose it, and you're better off to try and scoop it up and maybe run for a touchdown, but I, or for an extra point. But I don't think he uh, wanted to do that. Not a lot of experience. There's, at that. There's uh, Kevin, Kevin House. House. Number 89 had a touchdown pass on a bomb in game one of the season in the losing cause at Chicago. And this time widens the lead to nine to nothing for Tampa Bay. So the Buccaneers trying to give their home crowd a victory here, their first of the season. They lost once at home, three times on the road. And with 6.22 to go first half, they now lead nine to zip. Willie Galt and Dennis Gentry the return man for the Bears. It'll be Galt in the end zone. Flag is down on the play. And a good recovery by Irvin Randall, the linebacker, to make sure that Galt did not get to the sidelines. The penalty may well be against Chicago. 28 yard, 28 yard return by Willie Galt. Make a big difference on uh, field position, too. You take it from that point, the Bears will be coming out from under the shadow of their goal line. For 23. You like the use of the hands Sean on the Gale. So well. now they start from their 13, and uh, Mike Ditka looks a little uh, more like some of the scenes we saw on the sideline in uh, other years. <laughs> <laughs> Four and oh, he hasn't had too much to get angry about. He's a little upset at developments here for the Chicago Bears in this one. At the top of your screen, you can see a linebacker out in front of one of the wide receivers. The man steps up in the pocket, flags are down as he takes off, trying to get to the marker and did so. Depends on whether that flag is against Chicago or not, whether it'll be wiped out. Buccaneers showing good coverage downfield so far in this first half. And the penalty is against the Bears. Referee <laughs> Pat Haggerty will give us the call. I haven't seen the signal as yet. This is about the time that Dicka wants to get in that game himself. As you know, he's calling the plays this year. Holding, number 74, offense, still first down. Jimbo Covert, who uh, missed last week uh, with a kind of a sore back and neck. He's back in there, one of the, really one of the top NFL linemen there is in the game right now out of Pittsburgh. So it's going to be first and 15 from the six yard line. And Tampa Bay has just dominated this first half every category both wide receivers are doubled now so they're going to have to go somewhere else probably on the end zone McMahon steps over the goal line tries to run out of the sack dropped at the 10 yard line and it was Ron Holmes the rookie number one from Washington and Hugh Green the linebacker number 53 Let's take another look at it as the uh, Buccaneers drop into a big zone defense and you can see the pass rush and uh, Hugh Green is coming, coming, coming. McMahon feels the pocket giving in, tries to throw downfield, takes off and the Buccaneers now since they have a shot in this football game because of the fact that when you jump up 9 nothing, you move the ball like they have. It's now anybody's football game. They've had solid defense, especially in their pass coverage, which has been a weakness for them in the first four games. McMahon just got that away, and that's well off the mark. Intended for Willie Galt. Again, pressure on McMahon. It came from behind from Hugh Green, the linebacker, number 53. 
Maybe Green should skip a practice every week. He's been involved in a lot of pass pressure so far. Yeah, McMahon really took a shot on that when you could hear him yelling at his offensive lineman. He said, what's going on here? You know, Lehman Bennett told us before this game that if the Bears played their best game and Tampa Bay played their best game, Tampa Bay would lose the game because the Bears have a better football team. But he says, this is an emotional game. Our players are capable of upsetting this team. And he says, I think the situation is right. That's what he said. Third down and 13. Marjoram is in. He's out now. Well, Three wide receivers rolling as McMahon. A flag is down. McMahon takes off. And McMahon will be short of the first down. Knocked out of bounds at the 19-yard line. And David Greenwood, number 30. He's been a factor in this first half defensively. The illegal procedure. Signal against the Bears. No doubt will be declined by the Buccaneers. Well, when you see penalties in order like that, it's a sign the team has lost a little bit of its composure. And I think that's what happened to the Bears when you have, I think they've had a penalty on every play of this series. Well, that brings the crowd alive here at Tampa Stadium, 50,000 strong. 5.02 to go first half. Buford into punt. Leon Bright. Number 29. He dropped a couple last week. He doesn't usually drop them, but he did twice last week. Lost a fumble. Only the second time in his career that's happened and hurt his knee on the play. But uh, ready to go again today. He can be dangerous. With a 58-yard return last week. Buford, good punt. Bright at his 34. That's a block. Inside the 40, Leon Bright. Buford, the punter, made the tackle. And the Buccaneers in good position again. A 47-yard punt, but a 27-yard return. Uh, here's a man with a lot of guts. He always disdains the fair catch and decides he's going to take off. And he gets inside the bear contain man there with Sean Gale. And he was knocked out, and there was no support from this side. As Bright goes up the field, gets a couple of key blocks, and it's... Maury Buford, number eight, the punter, who had to make the tackle, or Bright would have been gone for a touchdown, but nevertheless, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are down to the Bears' 37-yard line, already leading nine to nothing. Bright has only called for a fair catch once in 137 tries. I think he... What? First down, DeBerg brings out the Buccaneers. They're on top, nine to nothing. Down the middle, it is incomplete. Intended for Carter, two Bears there, Dewerson and the linebacker Singletary. Don't forget there's great college football next Saturday on CBS Sports. You'll see a traditional intrastate battle between Michigan and Michigan State. And Michigan State gave Iowa fits yesterday, 35-31. to 31. They lost, but they well could have won that game. Michigan, meanwhile, beat up on Wisconsin 33-6. to 6. So the cross-state rivals will meet. Next Saturday here on CBS Sports. Second and ten, Buccaneers. Wilder trying to get wide. Good defensive play by the Bears. Dent, number 95, had a hand on him and forced him into traffic where Singletary brought him down, and there'll be little, if any, gain. In fact, it looks like about a half-yard loss. Indianapolis in front of Buffalo, 20-10 to 10 in the second period. The Colts under Rod Dauhauer and New Orleans. Look at this. Mm -hmm. In front of Philadelphia, 20 to zip. After beating San Francisco. Yeah, so, uh, and that busted up offensive line. Great job by Bum Phillips. In Miami and Pittsburgh. Well, that's about as close as everybody expected it would be today. 14 to 10. Pittsburgh stung by Cincinnati last Monday night. Three wide receivers for the Buccaneers on third and 11. Quick pass up the middle to Giles. Giles has a first down at the 25-yard line. Otis Wilson had the coverage. DeBerg and Giles are killing the Bears in this first half. The Bears well, try a little crisscross on their pass rush, 76. McMichael got free, but the pass was so quick as Giles just broke away from Otis Wilson. 
and found the hole. And Jimmy Giles, who will go game in and game out sometimes without catching passes or being a factor, then all of a sudden he comes a big factor, especially against the Bears. He's had some big games against the Bears. All right, now, would Todd Bell be a factor in this game with this offense of the Buccaneers? And your comment, and then we'll come back to the Todd Bell situation. <laughs> Obviously, Todd Bell would be able to help the Chicago Bears. He's such a versatile football player. Look at this. Straight ahead. Wilder picks up about six yards on the play inside the 20. And a good block by Ron Heller, 73. He pulled from his tackle spot and led right through the hole, which was a gaping hole, and Wilder followed him through. And this is the kind of sign that you get. There was some movement there. As soon as there was contact, immediately the Bears were back about a yard. So right now, the Buccaneer offensive line is really kind of out-muscling the Bears. Wilder has 20 yards on 11 carries. Cliff Thrift has come into the ball game defensively for Chicago. Frazier, the cornerback, has come out. So four linebackers for the Bears. Wilder is stacked up right at the line of scrimmage, and there'll be little gain on that one. Tripped over his blocker, Ron Heller, as the Bears just piled up everything along the line of scrimmage. It'll be third and four. Point about Bell being is the trade, line, trade deadline is next week. Bears fans know the situation publicly this week. He and his agent, Howard Slusher, uh, indicated that uh, that they'd like to be traded. They want uh, an opportunity to go and earn the money they think they're worth elsewhere. The Bears, Jerry Venisi, the GM, says they've made uh, their offer. They think is a fair one. They're not about to bend on that. And uh, there is no trade in sight. So the likely circumstance is that Todd Bell may wind up sitting out the season. A valued member of the number one defense last year. Two minutes to play. First half. Bucks nine. Bears nothing. Two minutes remaining. First half. And uh, unhappy looking Mike Ditka. His team has done literally nothing in the first half. And it shows on the scoreboard. Lehman Bennett trying to get a victory for his team that he, he feels really believes. And I think correctly so. That his team deserves a better than what they've had in an 0-4 start. And if they can get a win over one of the top teams like the Bears could turn their season around. Third down, DeBurr, deep for the corner and incomplete. Giles stepped out of bounds upfield, and Wilbur Marshall had the coverage on him. DeBurr just let that one fly. Fourth down. So again, uh, the Buccaneers with a good opportunity territorially uh, failed to come up with a touchdown. They have one in this half. And they're in front, but this still fits the pattern of the first four games. They are moving the ball and not able to make anything happen with it. Green Bay now 20 to 3 on another field goal. Over Detroit. Midway Bouquet's field goal attempt is good. So the Buccaneers widen their lead to 12 to nothing at 151 remaining. Second field goal of the afternoon for the Nigerian from Clemson, Donald Igwebike. I think it's very significant that uh, we'll have to find out Wilder's statistics, but the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have diversified much more in the first half of this game than they have throughout the, uh, the early part of the season. And um, they're getting more yards out of it. They're hitting House. They're hitting Giles. They're hitting these receivers who are proven talents over the past few years, which they hadn't been doing early in this season and uh, I think Lehman Bennett probably felt hey what have we got to lose we're 0-4 let's not plod down the field with James Wilder not that he's a plotter but what I'm saying is with one weapon uh, let's try our other weapons and I think even if it backfires I think he had nothing to lose and it's, it's worked out for him but I think the big thing is the emotional factor I think it's really tough Mike Dick that showed that Tampa Bay first half as I mentioned to his team trying to offset a letdown and no matter how good a football team is there are ups and downs to a season when you play 16 games you have ups and you have downs and right now Tampa's on an up the Bears on a down and you can see it you can see it on the football field you know Igway Buike kicks it off for Tampa Bay a short kickoff comes down at the five yard line Dennis Gentry mm -hmm. takes it up the sideline Gentry with a good return over the 40 yard line Buccaneers special team gave him a little room outside. Craig Curry finally knocked him out of bounds. And they're going to spot it at the 43-yard line, a 36-yard return. 
Here's a situation where Dennis Gentry headed towards the middle and just left his block and said, I'm going to freelance this one and get some yards. And he did get some yards with a nice move there on Curry and is finally knocked out of bounds. The Bears in pretty good field position and obviously would like to get on the board before halftime. And I think the Buccaneers have to be wary of giving up the big, big play to inspire this Bear team. They're probably going to give little, little by little. 143 on the clock. Man has been unable to get anything going in this first half. Get some time. Another bad pass. It was over the head of McKinnon and in front of Reitman, the tight end, number 80. So it is second and 10. The clock stopped with 138 to play. Watching the Buccaneers practice, it was uh, clear that... Uh, that their pass attack was going to be a factor, Johnny, and that they were getting the ball downfield in practice. And uh, when Kevin House said, gee, uh, you know, I, I think that DeBerg has had some opportunities to throw it deep, and he hasn't been throwing the long ball. He's been maybe a little too cautious. I think things are going to be different this week. Well, we've seen the evidence, and uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are loaded for bear literally today. Second and 10. Flips it off to Suey. Suey number 26 will have the first down over midfield, tackled from behind, 128 and counting, and it was Holmes and Castile and Washington all there to pull down Suey. Now, the, here comes the factor of McMahon having to call a couple of timeouts early in the game. It's going to hurt him right now in this drive. With a shotgun, he gets time again, goes short once more to Suey. Suey close to the first down. Hugh Green drives him back as Brantley made the initial contact, number 52. 103 in county. Frederick in at right tackle for Van Horn. He never had no injury report on Van Horn. Lots of time for McMahon. Only a four-man rush. Now up the middle, and it is tipped away and almost caught on the deflection by Willie Gulf, but it is incomplete. Scott Brantley got a hand on it. The pass was intended, I believe, for McKinnon. And then Brantley got a hand on it. And good reaction by Galt. Nearly came up with a reception. 44 seconds remaining. He did almost come up with the reception, but the Buccaneers almost had an interception. As you see a whole bunch of white jerseys around that ball. Almost. Number 31 is Craig Curry there to make sure that Galt didn't have a full opportunity to catch the football. Jimbo Colbert in the center of your screen. He missed last week's game with back spasms. Frederick played for him, but Colbert back in action. Third down and short. Three wide receivers in for Chicago. Peyton has the first down. 39 seconds and counting. Hurry up offense. Cannon made the tackle on Peyton. Holmes takes his time getting back, using up some seconds for... Buccaneers, McMahon up to the sideline, Suey out of bounds at the 31-yard line, 22 seconds on the clock. Greenwood on the coverage out there. Do they have, they have what, one timeout left? One, one timeout time left. By our count. Yes, that's the number on the board as well, and Mike Ditka sends in Ken Marjoram with the play. Buccaneers have all three of their timeouts, which probably will not be a factor with 22 seconds on the clock. Extra down linemen in Carl Morgan and Don Fielder and Chris Lindstrom of all come in on the front line of the Bucks defense. Second and five for a first down. And we may have the Buccaneers have called a timeout. They were confused on defense as to what they were going to play on defense. They had 12 men on the field. And Scott Brantley went out there and started counting, and he can count the 12. And he saw that there was one too many, so he had been sent into the game, 52 Brantley. He said, no, I, I shouldn't go in. They said, get in there. So he got in, and then he started counting and finally got back off the field. And there the coaches are saying, no, it's 11, not 12. He said, no, it's 12, not 11. I'm just teasing. They got it together. Well, the call on the timeout didn't hurt them so much. Coming no. up at halftime, the NFL today will feature Brent Nerv with scores and highlights from around the league. And... Uh, also, of course, the feature we referred to earlier, lending a helping hand, and that's how some NFL players past and present are helping the Mexican earthquake relief effort. And that'll be shortly. 22 seconds remain here at Tampa. Jim McMahon has had a chance to chat with Mike Ditka about what to do next, and 
And that gives us the opportunity to remind you the next week we have doubleheader action on CBS Sports. The Minnesota Green Bay, Detroit at Washington, St. Louis at Philadelphia. The Minnesota Green Bay game could be a big fan, big game for Chicago and Tampa fans, depending on the results today. But Green Bay in front of Detroit. And then the Bears will be the doubleheader game out of San Francisco against the Super Bowl champion 49ers in a rematch of last year's playoff game when the 49ers shut out the Chicago Bears 23 to nothing. Went on to the Super Bowl to, to beat Miami, as you know. Second and five, 22 seconds on the clock. Ball at the Tampa Bay 31-yard line. Suey, out of bounds. Close to the first down marker at the 27-yard line. Mike Pryor drove him out, number 24. There's another uh, Chicago connection from Marion High School in Chicago. He played his college football at Illinois State, number 24, the Buccaneers. Also a great baseball player. The Dodgers drafted him. Okay, we have 15 seconds left in the football game, and there's young Kevin Butler waiting to see... Uh, if he's going to have a chance to put three points on the board for the Chicago Bears before halftime, score 12-0. Third down situation. The man steps out of traffic. He'll run it. Stays inbounds. And now out of bounds inside the 15 at the 13-yard line. Five seconds remaining in the first half. So McMahon opted to surrender a couple of seconds to get the Bears in a little bit closer for Kevin Butler, and Butler comes on the field. 14-yard gain on the running play by Jim McMahon. The ball is at the 13-yard line of Tampa Bay. Well, the Buccaneers did not give up the big play. They let him go down the field 6, 8, 10 yards at a crack, and they'll take their chances on a, on a missed field goal or possibly blocking it. Steve Fuller will hold. Butler is 8 of 12 in field goals. This one will be attempted just over the 20-yard line. A 30-yard attempt for Butler. And he's got it. So the Chicago Bears, with one second on the clock, are finally on the scoreboard. They have been an offensive machine through the first four games of the season. But today, as Dick... Uh, wipes the sweat from his brow they have uh, been impotent to say the least they finally got three points on the 30-yard field goal from butler with one second to play first half tampa bay has shut them down defensively and done enough offensively to earn their 12-3 lead well i think the key for tampa bay is that lehman bennett's going to be able to go in the locker room at halftime and say hey I told you we can beat these guys and uh, you know that's something that they haven't had a chance to talk about when you're 0-4 and things have been going very poorly uh, it's certainly got to be an inspiration for Tampa Bay I don't think the Bears are going to kick off to Leon Bright would you I would imagine they'll probably on this kickoff just do some kind of a squibber you know Bennett was interesting in, in saying that when they went into Chicago the first time after he'd watched the Bears on mm -hmm. film from the preseason he said you know I really thought we were going to win that game he said, I'm not saying we're a better team but I really believe we win the game they go up 28 to 17 looked like they had it won Bears came back and beat them he says they're a better team now though I have to also admit that four games later they're playing to their ability and uh, it's going to be tough out there today but you're right he talked about the fact that hey all things being equal sure the, the Bears are a better team but our team is ready to play and beat them and so far at 12-3, he's got his club in front at halftime as Butler kicks it deep. He comes down at about the four-yard line. Leon Bright will have a chance, but not much of one. He ran right into the frigid air. <laughs> and Perry flattened him at the 18-yard line, and that's the end of the first half. So at halftime in Tampa, the Buccaneers 12, the Chicago Bears 3. of Chicago Bears have been held to only a field goal. It came with a second left in the first half. The only touchdown scored by Tampa Bay, Steve DeBerg to Kevin House, and they lead at the half 12 to 3 here in Tampa Bay. We'll be back at Tampa Stadium in just a moment.
back on a beautiful day at Tampa Stadium where the Buccaneers lead 12 to 3. Tim Ryan with Johnny Morris and uh, in that first half Jim McMahon who's been the story of the NFL quarterbacks through four games was 8 of 16 only 65 yards and an interception. Steve DeBerg on the other hand threw the touchdown pass to Kevin House. That's right he's thrown for over 200 yards we have some videotape of that touchdown and it was DeBerg right on the money to Kevin House who had to become a factor in this game as you take a look at the replay and watch House he has the protection how uh, I should say DeBerg and House goes straight down the the field into the corner of the end zone for the touchdown. Now on the replay, you're going to see Les Frazier, 21, is on the coverage, and he seems to hesitate. He's watching the quarterback. He's at the top of your screen now as he's covering House. Now watch him hesitate. He thinks House is going to go to the outside, and then boom, he goes straight down the field into the end zone for the only touchdown of the first half. And it's ironic the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have 204 yards passing, only 18 yards rushing. So James Wilder has not been that big of a factor. Here is the, the bad snap. This could end up costing Tampa Bay before this game is over. Yeah, Ken Kaplan's uh, high snap over the quarterback, Allen Risher, holding for Igwebuike. And uh, Igwebuike had to run back there and just cover the ball so they didn't get a chance to get the extra point. And yes, in a close scoring game like this, uh, who knows, that could be a, a big point before uh, the game is over. So the Bears uh, have to uh, be aroused from their hibernation of that first half. Uh, they just look like they missed their wake-up calls today. And credit to the Buccaneers. They're looking for win number one, and they came out fired up. You can imagine what Mike Ditka must have said to his uh, football team in there at halftime because he is a, a motivating type of coach he won't let anything hang back and be kind of casual he'll say what he thinks as you know he's broken a few hands on lockers so we'll see if uh, what he said in the locker room worked on the other side of the field of course Tampa Bay coach Lehman Bennett he had his things to say and you know must have been pretty nice things because his team is up 12 to 3 after an 0 and 4 start so his team has got to be inspired we'll see what they do with James Wilder It'll be very interesting to see how they handle the James Wilder situation now that they have the lead on Chicago but the Bears are going to have the ball first Donald Igwebuike will kick it off for Tampa Bay wearing their white uniforms today. And uh, a little miscue on the, on the kickoff there. Apparently down in the end zone, whether it's the, the netting behind the post, not sure what, but the officials are holding up play here momentarily as Igwebuike was just about to uh, pound that ball toward these two young men, Galt and Gentry for the Bears, waiting for it near the goal line of Chicago and now we're ready to go. 12 to 3 Tampa Bay lead the unbeaten Bears the winless Buccaneers and Galt will not bring it out. Well, you heard Johnny Morris refer to uh, some of the stats from the first half. Here's a look at uh, how the Bucks have really dominated the action. Ten first downs they have passed for 204 yards and only 18 yards rushing with the number one rusher James Wilder but they've got 222 yards total nearly double the Bears uh, numbers and they had the ball for about uh, nearly four minutes longer and no turnovers which has been which has hurt Tampa Bay early in the season they've had nine fumbles so let's see how Jim McMahon regrouped and see what uh, the Chicago Bears will do the Bears have been plus seven in turnovers and the Bucks minus six and that usually is related to your wins and losses all right, on first down, Peyton barrels his way up for a first down, a pickup of a little more than 10 yards over the 30-yard line. Walter Peyton, who was not real busy himself in the first half. Hugh Green and Scott Brantley made the tackle on the play. That's just his fifth carry. Randy Frederick continues to work for Keith Van Horn at right tackle for the Bears. We've had no word on an injury to Van Horn so we'll try to scout that out for you maybe just that he has been sat down first down Chicago over the 30 in motion goes Suey good shot to Peyton gets a block from Suey turns it upfield Brantley did a good job he turned Peyton inside and then tracked him down after a gain of four maybe five yards for Walter Peyton John Holt the number 21 came up to help Brantley on the play. Walter Payton, as you know, has over 13,000 yards rushing, and he has uh, plenty of them against Tampa Bay. However, his lifetime average against Tampa Bay is much lower than his lifetime average against the league. He's 3.9 yards against the Buccaneers. Let's come back to James Wilder, who had he, if he gets a 100-yard rushing day today, would have seven consecutive 100-yard rushing days and join O.J. Simpson and Eric Campbell in that category. As we see Suey stopped right at the line of scrimmage 
David Logan, number 76, the nose man, made the stop on him. So with only 18 yards for Wilder, doesn't look like he's going to get his 100-yard day. Well, I have a hunch that uh, Tampa Bay, if they stop the Bears on this drive and get the ball, I think we're going to see some, some work by Wilder because uh, he's what they do best. And now that they have the lead, they can eat up the clock. However, I'd be careful on that. The lead is not that big. And uh, what they've been doing best is throwing the football. And uh, so Lehman Bennett's got some key decisions as the Bears come into a third down and three situation. Crowd sorting the Bucks defense, which has been very solid thus far. Deep drop by McMahon. Gets time. Has a man open, McKinnon, and a diving grab by McKinnon. Is he inbounds? Yes. Dennis McKinnon with a diving catch on not a well-thrown ball by Jim McMahon. A first down Chicago at Tampa's 43. He waits for McKinnon, his number 85, to clear and gets good pass protection and throws it. And McKinnon almost caught this ball out of bounds because it was so far forward, but he made a super catch as he comes down. He came down well in bounds, and he is the number one receiver in the NFC in yards gained going into this game. Dennis McKinnon, who's got five touchdown passes already. Averaging 19.6 yards a reception coming into the game. First down, Bears. Opening offensive series, second half. Peyton, misdirection. Well covered by the Bucks. Gain of two. It'll be near the 40-yard line of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Logan again and Jeff Davis talking to Jay Hilgenberg, the Bears center, about David Logan. How do you rate David Logan without hesitation? He said he's the best man I'll face all season long on the nose. He is outstanding. Well, Logan is a, a nose guard that can get from sideline to sideline, and he can uh, contain two men as he puts on the pass rush. And, yeah, I know he wishes that Leroy Selman was around to help out a little bit, too. That oh, has certainly boy. hurt Tampa Bay's season with him being out with that bad back. Second and nine. In motion is Peyton. Rolling left. McMahon gets the blocking. Up the middle. It's complete to the tight end. Moorhead. Moorhead wanted to get up and run, but he slipped as he tried to rise and then was hit by number 58, Jeff Davis. But it's a first down Chicago at the 24 of Tampa Bay. The key to this play was McMahon clearing on the rollout. He gets the inside block. They seal everybody down. Here comes Moorhead down the field and just dips out to, to his left and he's wide open, finding the hole in the zone, and Jeff Davis comes and puts the clamps on him. Emery Moorhead, so the Bears moving down the field uh, a little bit more methodically. Of course, the key catch by McKinnon there for that first down. We have checked on the condition of Keith Van Horn. Apparently no injury, simply uh, being replaced at, for the time being by Andy Frederick, number 71 at right offensive tackle. Frederick played well last week for the injured Jimbo Covert on the left side. Rolling right, McMahon. Back the other way to Moorhead. Moorhead with a blocker in front of him and running room. Moorhead gets down to the 10-yard line. And is tripped up there. It'll be another bare first down. And they are threatening Davis and Greenwood on the tackle. 13-yard gain. Back against the grain. Uh, this is one of uh, Mike Ditka's fancy plays. The tight end screen as all the action goes to the right. And Moorhead gets up from a block and then just comes back and gets behind a one-man convoy. Jay Hilgenberg, the center, 63, throws his block. And there was a first down. And Hugh, McGree, Hugh Green, number 53, is chasing this play as he goes after McMahon. And watch this one. A little shot that he could have been called for a penalty on, wouldn't you think? Well, no call on a first down for the Bears. They need to get to the one-yard line for the first down. McMahon with lots of time. Frederick in for Covert at left tackle, we note. McMahon can't find a man open. He's going to have to throw the ball. He's running out of time. And a diving try incomplete. There were two Bears on the scramble trying to help out McMahon, Peyton and McKinnon. They wound up both going for the ball, and it wound up incomplete. This may be the all-time record for time allowed to throw a pass. <laughs> Jim McMahon is almost like touch football. There is Galt, 83. He's saying, I'm, I'm open. McKinnon says, I'm open. They have cut back. They follow the flow of the quarterback. <laughs> Man, <laughs> oh, that, that's almost comical. As the ball gets there, here comes Peyton. He says, I want it, and wound up that nobody got the ball. But McMahon had all day uh, to throw the ball as he rolled right and then came back to the left side. The Buccaneers are sticking with a three and a four-man rush. Not much blitzing. That was their game plan in the first half, and so far they've stuck with that the second half. McMahon 11 of 21 on second down and 10. In motion goes Suey. They give it to Peyton straight ahead. He's racked up by the center of that line. 
And it's John Cannon, number 78, making the hit and holding Peyton to a gain of maybe two. It'll be third down and nine yards to go. Um, uh, third and eight make it. And again, as usual, Peyton gets a little more than you think as they've spotted the ball for a little more than a two-yard pickup. Okay, Mike Ditka sends in a play, and now the Buccaneers have a, a big choice. Do they stay in their normal rush and give McMahon all day to throw the ball because they're not getting there with three and four men, or do they take a chance and blow in on him? It looks like they're going with their regular rush. They've got Chris Lindstrom in at right end, replacing Holmes. Lindstrom, number 75. McMahon gets lots of time, and he throws it over the head of uh, McKinnon. May have been picked off. And it was. Greenwood, a diving interception off the fingertips of McKinnon. And the Buccaneers stop the Bears at their one-yard line. Just a three-man rush. McMahon had his time, and he has just misfired three or four times today. This was just a little bit too high. And there is the interception, and the, the decision was that he intercepted in the end zone there, so it's going to go on the 20. It was very close right there. An interception of the game. It came in the end zone. You saw him fall down at the one, but he had actually caught the ball in the end zone. Off the tip by McKinnon, who tried to haul in what appeared to be a high pass aimed at him. But our speculation now, Johnny, you and I, is that maybe the target was Moorhead deeper in the end zone. But nonetheless, uh, the pass off the mark. McKinnon tipping it, Greenwood with a good interception, and Lehman Bennett's got to feel good about the trend. Look at what Green Bay is doing to Detroit. 27 to 3. Lynn Dickey at the controls for the pack. And Pittsburgh and Miami, a dogfight in Miami, tied at 17. First down at the 20-yard line following the end zone interception. DeBerg deep for Carter, flags down. Maybe interference against the Bears. Richardson jammed him. And it looked like it was maybe right after the pass had even been thrown. Plus, it was quite a ways downfield. If it was downfield before the pass was thrown, you can sometimes call that on the offensive receiver. But I think it's going to go against the defense, at least. Illegal contact, number 27. Richardson, number 27. Okay, now you can't bump him until you get down the field uh, before after five yards. And that time, uh, it looked like Richardson was going to be beat and put the jam on him. So it's going to be a first down for Tampa Bay as they come out throwing on first down, Tim. That has been the key, and it has been successful. And they are at the 30, at the 25-yard line. Off the wing in motion comes Bell. The give is to Wilder. Wilder picks his way nicely for a gain of about five yards. A flag down on the play. Wilder with only 18 yards rushing in the uh, first half. Well, this one goes against the Bucks. This is becoming a penalty-ridden football game. A lot of penalties. I think we're going to find out who the culprit was. Holding number 60, offense. Center, Grimes. Randy Grimes. Their number one pick in 83. Now he's right in front of 17. Here's Grimes, 60, making contact down the field. And they're uh, ruling that he kind of held on and put his arms around the body, which you uh, cannot do. Unless Mike McMichael was the man he was blocking on. First and 20, Tampa Bay at their 15. The bird gets time. Deep sideline complete. That is Kevin House for a first down at the 35-yard line. Frazier and Fensick are there. The Buccaneers continue to get the ball down the field, a 21-yard gain. Boy, has Kevin House come out of hibernation. Here's a man that caught 76 passes one year for him. Double coverage, Dewarson short, and you can see uh, down the field. Boy, did they leave him a hole. He's surrounded by three jerseys, but not before the pass is right on the dime. He all, almost got away from Gary Fensick there as Frazier was in on the tackle and came Marshall. Key play for Tampa Bay as DeBerg is having himself quite a football game. Well, one thing we note is we have not seen a, a fierce Bears pass rush so far either, apart from that shot from Wilbur Marshall on DeBerg. DeBerg got that downfield on the blitz, and it is incomplete. Frazier, good coverage deep on Kevin House. Bears were coming on that play, and DeBerg let it fly. 
That was another really super pass by DeBerg. As you can see, Frazier, real deep. They have inside-outside coverage, and then he just uh, puts the pass right there. But this time, Frazier is on the coverage very well. But the pass was thrown accurately. Good coverage by Les Frazier. DeBerg, 14 of 27, 225 yards. Second and 10, Tampa Bay from their own 36. 7.58 remaining Blitz. third period. Wilder, nowhere to go. Richard Dent has him. And Wilbur Marshall comes in with a shot. There'll be no gain. In fact, a loss of maybe two on the play. And some unhappy Buccaneers. Keller, number 73. Got Wilbur it. Marshall's got his helmet off. Boy, that's the first bad thing he should be doing. <laughs> Get that helmet on. You don't want somebody... But Wilbur Marshall's played a, an excellent game so far. He is all over the place. And that yeah. time... You know, it's a tough decision. Wilder was trying to, they were throwing him backwards, but at the same time, he was driving his legs, trying to break loose, and uh, and uh, Marshall came in for what a lot of people think would be a late hit. It's a judgment call. Ron Miller didn't like the hit. And you ask Wilbur Marshall, we talked about Todd Bell earlier among the holdouts of the Bears, the other one being Al Harris, the linebacker, and he said to Marshall, well, you know, do you think you would have had a fair chance to beat Al Harris had he been at training camp? And he said, yes, I think I would have gotten a fair chance, and I believe that I could have beaten him out. And it's all moot because he's the starter. Flags everywhere. And DeBerg unhappy at I, that development. I think he thought he had something going. So we'll see who moved. Procedure against the Buccaneers. Illegal procedure. So he may have had something going. And it might have been to that man, Kevin House, you saw a minute ago. And he's upset because the penalty is against his Buccaneers. 73. That's Heller, Ron Heller. The second-year man from Penn State at right tackle. At 73 at the right of your screen, there comes the movement, and then the Bears charge across uh, to take advantage of that movement, uh, knowing that a penalty would be called. So now it's a third and long situation, which is uh, usually where the Bears excel. Third and 16, the Bucks are four of 10 on third downs in this game. And they got a long one here. The bird gets time and it's complete to Bell. Bell bowls his way toward midfield and he has the first down. Jerry Bell, number 82, a 20 yard gain. And I think you hit one of the keys. This time, DeBerg was able to stand in the pocket, as you're going to see Bell gets jammed, goes down the field, and then turns to the outside as Otis Wilson is trying to be there on the coverage, but he can't get there in time. Bell makes the grab, and it's a first down, and that was a tough first down, folks, because they had third and very long. So it'll be first down right on the midfield stripe for the Bucks and Jerry Bell. been a key factor in this game and through the first four. This one's for Giles, intercepted by Dorson. Dave Dorson in full flight. A flag down. He takes it over the 45-yard line of the Bears. Ron Heller made the tackle on him. The pass was intended for Giles, who was murdering the Bears in the first half. That pass off target. And Dorson in full flight Took it to the 46, but a flag down. It'll be against the Bears, but it's their ball. It'll be a post-possession penalty, and you're right. Giles was open. DeBerg had the right receiver. He just threw it over too far. He tried to lay it in like he has a couple of others, and he just got too much muscle on it, and the Bears took advantage of it. Illegal use of the hands on the return. Number 21, first down. I think it was House that uh, Les Frazier got the hit on, but you can see that Giles is clearing. He's right there right there and then the ball is up and over too far and the penalty is coming up uh, I believe on 21 Les Frazier uh, makes the block on House from behind we won't see that but there's the block right there and then there's the tackle by Heller Bears ball 6.08 to go third quarter the Wolverines the Spartans CBS next Saturday 2.30 Eastern Time First down, Chicago Bears, their own 33-yard line, following their first interception of the game by Dave Dewerson. Rolling right, McMahon has time. The pass is complete to the tight end, Moorhead. A wounded duck 
And he went down like a bird dog, a Labrador retriever, to make the catch and a first down for Chicago in Bucks territory at the 44. Okay, the Bears on the roll again with the fake of the counter to the other side to Peyton, and McMahon has plenty of time out here, and Moorhead comes up with another super catch as he clears the linebackers and just take that right off the grass tops. The man from Colorado who has become a factor in this game because they pretty well shut down the wide receivers, and when you do that, the tight end of the running backs are going to become a bigger factor. His fourth catch, Carl Morgan in on the nose for David Logan. The last play, and this one, he's number 67. And flags everywhere, some early motion. On the Bears' first down play from the 44 of Tampa Bay. Ball start, number 71, offense. Andy Frederick, number 71, charged with a false start, will leave a first and 15. Keith Browner is in at left linebacker, number 57, replacing Chris Washington. And now Browner comes out, and number 54, Irvin Randall, comes in. I'm waiting for the moment when Tampa Bay decides to go with the all-out blitz. We haven't seen too much of it in talking with McMahon last night. He said if they blitz, we'll burn them. But he hasn't really had that much of an opportunity. They've played a conservative but effective defense. Flaring out to Moorhead. Moorhead forced out by Greenwood. Actually, his own momentum carried him out of bounds. With Greenwood there late to cover. He got to the 40-yard line for a gain of close to 10 yards. We'll leave a second and a long five. You can notice the uh, huge pad around uh, McMahon's waist also. Makes him look very bulky, but as you know, he had that kidney injury. So quarterbacks around the NFL now are really not worrying about light pads and mobility. They're worrying about staying healthy because that's the toughest thing for a team to do now these days is to keep your quarterback healthy the entire season. Pro set for the Bears. They give it to Peyton. Big hole. Gets the block from Thomas. Peyton turns it on and gets to the 25-yard line. And a first down. 15-yard gain for Walter Peyton. Greenwood well, we'll and Holt on the tackle. A perfect little uh, draw here as he comes behind Thomas. Thomas, 33, throws the block on uh, Brantley, and then Peyton turns up the field, and there he is out in the open field. He's tough to bring down. Finally, it's Greenwood on the tackle, but the Bears on the move down to the 25-yard line, and the Tampa Bay defense has been called upon three or four times in a row since midway through the second quarter to stop the Bears. Peyton's 10th carry, 44 yards on the day. Moorhead in motion. Draw play. Peyton jammed up. Good defensive reaction by the Bucks. He got three on effort, leading the charge cannon number 78, and the rookie Ron Holmes number 90 behind him. Green Bay continues to lead the Lions 27 to 3 in the third period. Indianapolis really pouring it on hapless Buffalo 35 to 10 in the third. And San Francisco and pretty close. Cleveland. Yeah, that's been close for a while. 10 to 3. What first field goal for the Atlanta Falcons? Second and nine. This is Thomas. Thomas trying the route straight ahead. And again, tough work in the middle. Brantley, number 52, wrapping up Thomas after a gain of three. John Cannon there under the bottom of the stack, number 78. Here comes Kenny Marjoram in with a play rather than the signal in as he brings it into Jim McMahon on a third and key situation. Tampa Bay responded last time. Let's see what they do this time down deep in their territory. They have their nickel defense yes. in with uh, Morgan, number 67, making a fourth down lineman. And the nickelback, Craig Curry, number 31. Ordinarily, Paul Dombrowski would be the nickel, but he has a thigh injury, and Curry has taken that role today. Third down. McMahon has time, and it is complete. Touchdown! Dennis McKinnon. And there are a goodly number of Bears fans applauding that touchdown here in Tampa. Dennis McKinnon with a really a super catch on the quick post pattern. Castile was on him, but the pass was led perfectly. And McKinnon, who has a knack for coming up with a spectacular type of catch. McMahon had the protection. Here he comes right across. You can see pretty good coverage, but the pass was perfect. The Bears score back in this football game, and that missed extra point or that bad snap looms very large now. 
for Tampa Bay as number 85 scores his sixth touchdown. Kevin Butler with the point after. Steve Fuller holding. It is good. And so the Bears finally score the touchdown and have closed the margin to two with 3.40 remaining. The third quarter, it's 12-10. Tim Ryan, Johnny Morris back at Tampa Stadium where Jim McMahon has not been super sharp in this football game, but he delivered the airmail to Dennis McKinnon on that touchdown, a perfect strike. The Bears going 67 yards in six plays, 21 yards to score, 228 used on the clock. Butler's kickoff. Freeman, the rookie from the goal line. Escapes from one tackle and gets to the 25 where he is stopped by Ken Taylor and William Perry. 26-yard return. Tampa Bay will start from their 26 and they lead 12 to 10. The missed point after, as Johnny indicated earlier in this close game, uh, could well turn out to be a factor as time marches on. 3.28 to go third quarter. I think this is an important series for Tampa Bay to uh, offset any momentum the Bears may have gotten from that last touchdown. McMahon, 14 of 25, 169 yards, two interceptions. He had only three in the first four games. Wilder, straight ahead, flagged down. Wilder picked up maybe four yards before he was stopped. We have seen uh, Ron Springs on only one carry so far. He was uh, picked up from the Dallas Cowboys to offer some relief to Wilder. But the Bucks have been passing the football primarily in this game, and so far, relatively successfully. Well, they're going to hold now. Number 60, offense, still first down. Randy Grimes, his second holding penalty of the game, drops the Bucks back to their 15-yard line. And that's the fourth penalty charged against Tampa Bay that's cost them 45 yards. And when you have penalty figures like that and turnovers, as we indicated, have been a problem for them, and that's how you get to be 0-4. First and 20. Wilder, good hole off tackle, tripped up by the safety Fensick, or he would have had a lot of real estate ahead of him. Good blocking at the point of attack on that play. Corson and Yarno, the left side of the offensive line of the Buccaneers. It is beginning to look like his uh, string of 100-yard games is going to uh, come to an end. 14 for 28, that's two yards per carry. But Tampa Bay is ahead. <laughs> Second down and 12. The 46 defense for the Bears. Play action to Berg, sideline incomplete. Carter was the intended receiver, but De Berg had to rush the pass with Steve McMichael, number 76, applying the pressure. Carter had not made his turn back to the sideline. Theo Bell is coming into the football game. Well, interestingly, Walter Payton had six consecutive 100-yard games last year and was stopped by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers short of the record of seven held by O.J. Simpson and Earl Campbell. So a turnabout may be fair play. Third down and 12. Slot formation right for the Buccaneers. Fumble to Berg on the snap from center. A miscount. Bears come up with the football. Another tough break for the Buccaneers. Steve McMichael recovered the loose ball. And now the Bears are in excellent field position, trailing by two. I think DeBerg was thinking about that blitz that was coming there. They were faking the blitz, and he was trying to think of what he was going to do. He pulled out and fumbled the ball. The Bears now in deep in Tampa Bay territory with a chance to take the lead because they're only down by two. So once again, the Tampa Bay defense is on the spot as DeBerg's been talking to himself all the way off the field on that one. Singletary and Dewerson were showing blitz. And he may have tried to audible, and that created the mix-up in the snap call, but it is Bears ball at the 21-yard line of Tampa Bay. In motion, the tight end, Moorhead. McMahon is sacked 
Hugh Green from the backside, number 53. And Hugh Green, who has been a little unhappy with the losing in Tampa Bay, skipped practice on Wednesday after a big game against Detroit, comes up with a big play here. As McMahon opted for the pass on first down, and here comes Hugh, number 53. As there was pressure from all sides, but he got away from uh, Mark Bortz, put the uh, grab on him, and then a whole bunch of help from everybody. To get a half a sack for about three people on that one, I think. Yeah, and yet it was uh, really Green's effort on the play. It's a loss of six. The ball is at the 27-yard line now. So the turnover goes to Chicago, and a big defensive play makes it a little tougher for them. Suey picks back maybe five of the six-yard loss. It'll leave third and a long 11. Brantley, number 52, made the tackle. Time winding down third quarter, 118 on the clock. Marjoram comes in, delivers the play to Jim McMahon. Logan comes back in defensively for Tampa Bay, along with Mike Pryor, number 24, in the secondary. The two linebackers come out, Brantley and Davis. Third down and 12. The ball at the 23 of Tampa Bay. Well, if this, uh, if this is your basic big play, let's see who comes up better. And it may have been busted, but McMahon's running out the left side and will be short of the first down. John Holt, number 21, was in position. And what's your guess on that play, Johnny? I think he crossed up his own uh, teammates on that one and thought he could go. Let's see if you can look at the reaction from the from the Bears on the fake and the, and the pulling of everybody here. I don't know. I think it looked like it might have been planned that time. And uh, it was one-on-one -on -one out here. Holt had to get him. And uh, McMahon kind of went down for him. His legs buckled, but the Bears have a chance to take the lead here with the field goal. The ball will be spotted at the 20-yard line, up to 20 and a half, so we'll call it a 30-yard attempt for Kevin Butler. Right in front of the posts, and he has it. So Chicago, for the first time this afternoon, with zeros up at the end of the third quarter, have taken the lead. At the end of the third quarter, the score, Chicago 13, Tampa Bay 12. The Buccaneers. It will be bright, four yards deep, and he will not bring it up. So the Bucks start from their 20-yard line, failing by that missing point the PAT missed. Next Sunday on CBS Sports, the NFL Today begins our afternoon of doubleheader action. Minnesota at Green Bay, St. Louis at Philadelphia, 12.30 Eastern time, and then the doubleheader action, Chicago Bears at San Francisco against the Super Bowl champion 49ers in a rematch of last year's playoff game. And Irv Frost will report live from San Francisco on the NFL Today. What are the 49ers doing this afternoon down in Atlanta? They've been kind of quiet. It's been a close game. Well, they were winning 10 to 3 in the third quarter. First down. Tampa Bay. Lots of time left in this one. Swing pass for Wilder. Singletary picked him up immediately. Wilder earned four, maybe five yards on the play. You wanted to know that San Francisco score? Here it is right now. <laughs> well, things have changed. 49ers, 17 to 10. David Archer, in at uh, quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons, took it in to close what had been a 17 to 3 margin. Falcons made it 17 to 10. 14.52 to go fourth quarter there. And we have 14.15 to play here on second and seven for the Bucks as they gave Wilder only three on the first down swing pass. And Wilder stopped by Wilbur Marshall. Got another three. We'll call it third down and four for Tampa Bay. And there is DeBerg looking over to the sidelines to Lehman Bennett and uh, his other quarterbacks who send the signals in. Of course, Jimmy Ray has a broken foot Their Offensive coordinator, he's up in the press box today rather than down on the sidelines. And he hadn't been calling the plays the last couple of games, but he's getting well now after that auto accident. I think I see uh, somebody with crutches blitz. down there. The blitz is on, and the pass is complete, and now bobbled out of bounds. But it'll be Tampa Bay ball. Jerry Bell, the receiver, 
Uh, the ball knocked loose, but nobody else touched it before it went out of bounds. So Tampa Bay retains possession and a first down. Okay, Wilbur Marshall, number 58, as a part of the action. As you can see him come out, come across with the, uh, the tight end coming out, or the U-back, and he has to cover him out there. Man for man, strips the ball loose. Fortunately for Tampa Bay, the ball goes forward and then out of bounds, and it's a first down as Steve DeBerg beat the blitz that time as the Bears came all out. So the Buccaneers at their own 38-yard line. Jerry Bell sets up on the wing right, the man they call the U-back. They give it to Wilder. He slipped trying to make his cut. Dave Dewerson holds him there. It'll be a gain of maybe a half yard. What a start for James Wilder this year. 497 yards into this game on 102 carries, 670 total yards. Today, however, only 33 on 16 carries. And Jimmy Ray, hey, we see, is down on the sidelines. Yeah, he's come down. We've told, uh, we've been told that his doctors preferred that he be sitting down upstairs as he recuperates from that badly fractured leg. Wilder dropped behind the line. Hartenstein and Wilson both there, and there'll be a loss of three yards on the play back to the 35. I guess Jimmy Ray was enjoying their first half offense so much that he wanted to be part of the action down there. Alan Risher and. Steve Young signal in the plays for them, and they, they have one a decoy and one who's got the real play coming in. It's going to be third down and 12 for the Bucks at their own 35 following the loss. Wilson and Hartenstein charging in on Wilder. In motion is Jerry Bell. Berg, sideline for House. Incomplete able to stay in bounds to make that catch and McMichael dropping the bird Jimmy Ray was enjoying their first half offense so much that he wanted to be part of the action down there Alan Risher and Steve Young signal in the plays for him and they, they have one a decoy and one who's got the real play coming in it's going to be third down and 12 for the Bucks at their own 35 following the loss. Wilson and Hartenstein charging in on Wilder. In motion is Jerry Bell. The Berg sideline for House. Incomplete. Unable to stay in bounds to make that catch and McMichael dropping the Berg just as he released the ball. Well, he got his hands on it there. Could not quite hang on as the ball squirted loose on contact uh, with the ground. So it's going to be fourth down. Tampa Bay will have to punt. 54,000 fans here, and I would say five or 10,000 of them might be Chicago Bear fans. A lot of retired Chicagoans live down in this area. There's Dan Hampton, number 99, apparently was shaken up on that play. Coming back from some knee problems. Has had a couple of super games the last two games. Yeah, I thought it was interesting that he uh, described to us yesterday how Buddy Ryan has really let him uh, rehabilitate at his own pace. Hasn't expected too much from him, knowing he's not at 100%, but knowing that, that Hampton at 50% <laughs> can get a lot of the job done. So he feels he's been playing better as he's been getting stronger. Ken Taylor waiting for it at the 15-yard line for the Bears. There's Frank Garcia. Hands at his 20 and hits from the 25. Good punt by Garcia. Fair catch signal by Taylor at the 23-yard line of the Chicago Bears. Well, he made a mistake there. He had plenty of room to run and uh, uh, opted to call for the fair catch. We'll return to Tampa Stadium after this word from your local station. Johnny Morris back at Tampa Stadium. 11.54 to play regulation time. A one-point margin. The Bears in front on the 30-yard field goal by Kevin Butler. High formation. Play action. Flag down. McMahon eludes the rush. The pass complete. It is McKinnon, and McKinnon has first down mileage to the 39-yard line of the Bears, but the flag was down early at the line of scrimmage. A 16-yard gain on the play may be wiped out. 
No, it's against Tampa Bay. Offside, Buccaneers declined by the Bears, of course. Defense, number 76, offside, declined, first down. The active David Logan charged with offside. Jay Hildenberg says you don't know what to expect from him. He comes at you from the left, he comes back at you from the right, and say sit back and play soft and let the tackles get at you. He said he's he's just the best that he'll see all season long. What the, Logan. What the Bucks need now is a big turnover. Scott Brantley at linebacker for the Bucks. First down Chicago. Play action up the middle and a good catch by Moorhead for another Bear first down. He took the shot from Craig Curry, held on to the ball, but is slow to get up. Dennis McKinnon there to attend to him. A 22-yard gain. He had to turn to catch that pass and left himself vulnerable to the, on the blind side. They're, looks, they're, look, they're looking at his shoulder. This time McMahon spotted him right away as he runs an arrow right down. You see 31 at the top of your screen. He's in the middle of the field, and he has to come over to get Moorhead once he clears the linebackers. And uh, Curry was too late getting over there and puts the hit on Emory Moorhead. He really clutched that football. He was willing to sacrifice his body. He goes off the field. It doesn't look like it's going to be... That's serious. Five catches for the tight end, Emory Moorhead, who is a, you know, from Evanston, Illinois, a local product. He used to always get in Mike Ditka's doghouse, but he's out of it now. Sure is. He, he thinks that he's developed uh, very, very well as a tight end. Remember, he was a halfback and a wide receiver before he became a tight end. Now got his weight up about 225, 230. Tim Reitman comes in to replace him, number 80. A rookie from UCLA has been in the USFL. McMahon is now 15 of 27. His number's climbing up. Flares it out to Galt. Galt trying to get loose. Good play by Castile to not let Willie Galt get to that sideline. But the gain for Chicago will be about eight yards. 43 to three. <laughs> will you look at this? Randy Wright, Johnny, I'm told, came in to replace Lynn Dickey when the score was 27 to three. Dickey apparently uh, injured a thumb or a finger, and R Randy Wright's thrown two more touchdown passes. And here's another route. 42 to 10, Indianapolis over Buffalo. Boy, the Bills are, and look at this one, close. Pittsburgh, Miami, 17-17, fourth quarter, and the Bears here on the move. That is close, Johnny. 17 all, you're right. Second and two from the 30-yard line. Peyton trying to get wide. Good defensive reaction, but he's still going, and he has the first down yardage. Walter Peyton to about the 26-yard line. And it was finally Hugh Green, I believe, who made the uh, stop. No, uh, make it Greenwood, number 30, David Greenwood. Well, this was a case where Peyton just made the yardage on his own because he got to the outside. Uh, Jeff Davis was there, 58. Matt Sui's trying to block. There were two Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and Peyton just kind of scrambled out of it and was able to get some yardage. Walter Peyton. First down, Bears. Threatening here to widen their lead. They lead by a point. 9.47 to play, fourth quarter. First down at Tampa's 26. Blitz. Short drop for McMahon. Going deep for Galt, and it is incomplete, overthrown. Good coverage by Castile all the way downfield with Galt. And the blitz really created the incompletion, didn't it? Yes, the, the, uh, the Bucks blitzed their safety. David Greenwood came, but Walter Payton picked him up, and it did create the pressure, and McMahon had to rush that throw. Willie Galt, who's still trying to get out from the track man syndrome, isn't he? <laughs> yes, but I think he's earned his way out, don't you? Well, he has, but uh, it's, it's Willie who usually talks about That's it, you know. Uh, it's, it's not everybody else saying that he's just a track man. Uh, I think he should just uh, leave that uh, chapter of his life behind until he's back on the running track. He's been doing the job at wide receiver. Second and ten. One setback for the Bears. It's Peyton. Quick pass out to Moorhead. Moorhead trying to get to the marker, and it'll be very close on the second and ten play. I believe that was an audible, a check off at the line of scrimmage by McMahon. He sensed the blitz coming, and that's the same play the Bears scored a touchdown on last week against the Washington Redskins. He saw the movement of the linebackers, and he sensed that blitz and just has uh, Moorhead, the tight end, just go down a couple of steps into the outside. Very smart heads up play by McMahon and Moorhead who obviously wasn't hurt that, that bad when not he went too off badly, the field. Not at all. Well as they measure McMahon's second half numbers it's just short. 
McMahon, 10 of 13 in the second half. And you can just see with each pass that he's throwing the ball better. He got off to a rather shaky start. He now has 161 yards and a touchdown. And the, the key to that play is that you see the blitz. Here comes Hugh Green. Now, Walter Payton, 34, is the one to put a little bit of a block on him to give McMahon a little chance. And it caused Hugh Green to bend over a little bit to absorb the hit rather than jumping up and trying to bat the ball uh, away. So even though the hit was a little bit late, it caused Hugh Green to come out of his, uh, go into his shell there to take, to absorb the hit as Lehman Bennett and Mike Ditka now top of their strategy. He's looking down that short list. What have I not called today? Well, maybe we'll see it right now. At the 16-yard line, it is third down and at the length of the football required for a first down. Suey and Peyton are the setbacks. McMahon sneaking and has the first down. Boy, did you see Brantley, 52, come across? He tried to take McMahon's head off on that quarterback sneak because the Bears now have a tendency to go to, to the QB sneak when they're less than a yard or half a yard to go. Brantley lined way up off the line of scrimmage and flew right at McMahon's head. He probably has seen McMahon doing his headbutting routine with yeah, the says, Bears give you head offensive right, huh? linemen. Right. <laughs> he said, that might be the answer. That helmet he wears so big, uh, it, it looks like his five size is too big for him, too. At the 15-yard line, a Bears first down. Galt goes to the left. McKinnon comes to the right. Dan Horn, we note, is back in at right tackle, so Andy Frederick has shared time with him today. McMahon just running out oh. of time, got it off to Suey, and then took quite a shot from behind. Oh, did he take a hit from Hugh Green, 53. Hugh Green got past Walter Payton. Payton slowed him up for a moment, but Hugh Green kept up on his pass rush. Now watch Payton and Hugh Green, 34 and 53. He gets away from Peyton and just takes off. McMahon's waiting, gets rid of it, and then, did you see that head snap back? That's the way quarterbacks get hurt. That's why Hugh Green loves to blitz, because he knows how to hit him. Well, I also saw the helmet in the middle of Peyton's, of uh, McMahon's back, and uh, that is a no-no. You're not supposed to use the crown of your helmet. But that was unseen and uncalled. Second and nine. Play action. And rolling left, and back the other way. Everybody covered, he's gonna take off. And goes out of bounds at the five yard line. And maybe has the first down. It's good. Yes, it, it will be a Bears first down. So a big play by McMahon on the run. Nothing like having a mobile quarterback to fake to Walter Payton who comes around this way. And then now is looking down the field. McMahon has such a good sense of the field. Now, he had a man open down there, but decided to take off down the field and then headed for out of bounds rather than take on one of the defenders. There's Willie Gall. He's open. He's been waving a lot today, hasn't he? <laughs> but that's hard for a quarterback when he's running the other way to, to spot a receiver way back on the other side of the field. I saw Peyton in the replay lay off a block that would have been a clipping penalty. So again, the experience and savvy of Walter Peyton. The Bucks' objective is to keep the Bears to a field goal, if at all possible. First and goal with three tackles in the game on the offensive line for the Bears. They're at the four-yard line. Pitch out Peyton. Peyton gets down close to the goal line. Touchdown! Walter Peyton... Now, Wotus Payton had plenty of blocking. Instead of heading for the corner, he decided to go north-south, waited for the block by Suey, and just headed straight up to get the four yards. A lot of backs would have dipped to the outside and gone for the corner to try and run their way in and maybe avoid the contact. He just turned up, went north-south, took it in. Touchdown. Chicago. It was a touchdown, wasn't it? Yes, it was, and that was the first touchdown rushing by Walter Payton this season. He caught one last week from Jim McMahon via the aerial route. You know, I think that's a milestone for him, too, I believe. 100 touchdowns. That gets him to 100 touchdowns. He gets a pat from Mike Ditka, who has had to sweat a lot. This game is not over, but certainly the momentum has really swung, as in the first game between these two teams. It was Tampa Bay the first half, the Bears the second half. Butler will attempt the point after. It is good. So with 7.51 remaining, 
the Chicago Bears have widened their lead 20 to 12. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris reminding you that tonight, after you've had a full day of football, you can see the all-new 60 Minutes, followed by the all-new Murder, She Wrote, Angela Lansbury and Company, and two season premieres tonight, Crazy Like a Fox and Trapper John, M.D. I like Trapper John. He's, he's good. By the way, Johnny, we mentioned the 100th career touchdown for Walter Payton. The company that he joins is companies joined before. Jim Brown, Lenny Moore, Don Hudson, Frank Carroll, and Franco Harris, and uh, John Riggins are the only other players in NFL history to score 100 touchdowns. Bill Freeman takes Butler's kickoff. Freeman's got some running room. Gets to the 30-yard line. Good return for the rookie number 81. A 35-yard return for the rookie from Arizona, Ken Taylor. Made the tackle for the Chicago Bears. Uh, the second half time of possession chart will certainly tell the story of this half. The Bears almost 15 minutes to 7.33 for Tampa Bay. Kind of a turnaround from the first half, you might say. They went 77 yards on 10 plays to get the touchdown using up 403 on that drive. And there are the combo of offensive stars who have given the Bears the 20 to 12 lead. Steve DeBerg from the 30 yard line. Wing formation right. They swing it out to Wilder. Wilder has a first down. Tripped up by Wilbur Marshall, got over the 40-yard line for an 11-yard gain. Well, Wilder becoming a little bit of a factor here, but, you know, have you noticed they haven't thrown to Kevin House for a long time? I don't think the Bears have doubled him that much since, uh, since he caught all those passes, but he's been very quiet the second half. Our spotter Terry Kane notes that William Perry is now in Dan Hampton's spot, and we saw Hampton in the last defensive series for the Bears, a leave limping. They try and get an injury report on him. DeBerg, complete. Good catch by Kevin House. Not just a good catch, but the way he kept his balance with two feet down inbounds. And it'll be close to a first down, a nine-yard game. He was obviously a secondary receiver on this time because he's looking one way, can't find the receiver. House continued with his pattern, throws back to the other side, and as you said, nice footwork by Kevin House. And Tampa Bay's going to win this game. They got to, they got to make double efforts to, to utilize him the rest of this game. I don't care if you've got Wilder that can run. You've got to get the ball down the field. Five catches for House in this game. He had only five coming in after four games. Wilder is dropped on the second and one try, and it'll be a loss of maybe a yard on the play. And it was Otis Wilson with Steve McMichael putting the stop on the big man, Wilder. Third and two. That would have been a perfect situation to throw a short pass to one of the wideouts, uh, second and one. Everybody and his brother knew they were going to hand it to uh, Wilder. Third down and two. Adger Armstrong, number 40, in on the short yardage situation with Wilder. And Steve DeBerg is calling a timeout, evidently. No, Chicago Bears. Bears call the timeout. And we have 6.14 to play regulation time. Chicago on top, 20 to 12. Well, that message is fairly direct. I like the artwork on the ship. Shape up or ship out. And the Bucks shaped up rather well early on, but now they've got to get two scores here. Third down and two. Big play, clearly. Play action fake to Wilder. The pass complete. Calvin McGee, and McGee takes it all the way inside the 30. Big play for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They say he stepped out of bounds upfield. However, he has the first down. Seven-yard gain at that point. A good call by the Tampa Bay bench. The fake to Wilder. Everybody expected Wilder to carry the ball, just take the receiver out. McGee takes it, and he does apparently step out of bounds right here. He did get the first down. Right there with his uh, left foot, I think he uh, he did step out of bounds, but it's still a first down. DeBerg takes a pop after he got rid of the ball. A pretty good pop by Ron Rivera. 
But he's back in action. Steve DeBerg with the Bucks on the roll now inside the 45 of the Bears. Wide open on the right side is Jerry Bell. And Bell with another Buccaneer first down. Miscue defensively by Chicago there. They'll spot it at the 25-yard line. Wilbur Marshall got over to make the tackle a little late. Yeah, I think you're right. There was a mistake in the coverage because nobody was there. He was out there all by himself, and you see two or three jerseys way down the field. So obviously there was a miss up on the uh, on the coverage, and Bell put his shoulder down there and uh, gets another first down for Tampa Bay. Well, that had been Kevin House with his speed. That could yeah. have really turned into something. But Bell did pretty well with it, though, didn't yes, he? Yes, he did. He's got a first down at the 25-yard line. Buccaneers threatening, 5.33 to play, regulation try time. They're down by eight, remember, with the missed point after. There's a linebacker covering Carter. It's for Carter, and what a catch! Touchdown! <laughs> Gerald Carter, great reaction to turn around the pass. He was looking inside, shook off Wilbur Marshall's coverage. Great play. And it was Marshall all the way on it as DeBerg spotted him, just threw it up there and was hoping that Carter, as he beat the blitz, would spot the ball. That's a heck of a catch by any wide receiver. You have to turn your back to the ball and turn around. But it was also a very tough coverage for Wilbur Marshall to cover Gerald, cover Gerald Carter all the way down the field because there was nobody deep to help him. And that's what you have to do sometime in a Buddy Ryan defensive scheme. And Carter with a super catch, and there is the extra point. Donald Igwebuike connects, and it's back now to a single point. Dave Dewerson, number 22, was on the safety blitz. And he did get to DeBerg, but too late. And of course, that left a hole downfield. Here's the blitz by Dave Dewerson. DeBerg spotted it, then took his punishment. And of course, he didn't even get a chance to see until he got up, but he thought his man Carter caught the ball. Finally, he discovers that he did catch it. And usually, you can catch it from the, the reaction of the crowd. <laughs> and there it is, a touchdown. Give DeBerg a lot of credit because once he saw Dewerson on that blitz, he recognized the defense and he realized that Marshall was going to have to cover his man, man for man down the field. So DeBerg just threw it down there and hoped for the best. Big Wave Weekes kickoff. Five yards deep. Dennis Gentry brings it out. Gentry. Breaks one tackle and gets to about the 17-yard line and a fired-up special team of the Buccaneers. Calvin McGee and number 54, Irvin Randall on the tackle, and that brings the crowd alive. They trail by a point, 5-11, as the orange-clad Buccaneers fans try to rally their team to its first win of the season. They are 0-4. The Bears, of course, 4-0. And Tampa Bay started blitzing quite a bit in the last uh, few series of the Bears, changing their strategy a little bit. You saw Hugh Green coming several times. Let's see how they handle it now. McMahon brings out the Bears in the I formation. Calvin Thomas is the fullback. Pitch out to oh. Peyton. He dropped the ball and dives on it. The pitch was high from McMahon. And Peyton... Unable to haul it down, but alertly just dove on a loose ball. He didn't try to pick it up. I think he was going to hand the ball off to McKinnon, coming back on a, a wide receiver end around. Peyton uh, alertly fell on the ball. There's McKinnon, who was probably going to be the recipient of a handoff from Peyton. So now the Bears are in a long passing situation. Well, not that long. Second and about 13. Randall comes in for Washington, a left linebacker for Tampa Bay. Second and 13. McMahon, complete to McKinnon. McKinnon driven out of bounds and complaining that the hit was out of bounds from Greenwood. We're talking to Greenwood yesterday. <laughs> he was kind of expecting something physical from McKinnon, who has nurtured his image as a tough guy wide receiver around the league. McKinnon just on a simple down and out pattern. Greenwood is the short man in the zone here. Here comes the hit. First by Castile, and then comes Greenwood, and then a little headbutt between the two. But more importantly right now, it's third and about almost four. Key play in this football game. Timeout is called by the Buccaneers. On this 
defensive situation, third and a long three for Chicago. And while uh, Greenwood, it did appear, made the tackle out of bounds, I don't think McKinnon has a, a lot to complain about, <laughs> especially in, when it comes to playing against Tampa Bay. All right, he's the one that gave that big hit on Mike Washington a couple of years ago that caused some controversy, and uh, Washington is no longer playing football. And McKinnon is an offensive intimidator. As you look at the uh, Bears on the sideline, McMahon discussing things with Mike Ditka, Ed Hughes, the offensive coordinator, Steve Fuller, the quarterback there, the backup quarterback, timeouts remaining, two for each team. Now, when we look at McMahon, it's important to note that Today, the Bears defensively have given up 330 passing yards to Steve DeBerg, his best day ever as a Buck. And he's got Steve Young breathing down his throat on the roster of the Buccaneers. He is 22 of 38, two touchdown passes, one interception, and of course, he fumbled the ball that led to the Bears' field goal by Butler. And that put them ahead for the first time. They have since added a touchdown, but DeBerg then got it to Carter, and it's closed the margin back to a point. And of course, the uh, bad snap on the extra point looms very large now, very large. Three minutes, 47 seconds left in this football game, and uh, that one point makes everybody play it a little bit differently. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of the telecast without the express written consent of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the National Football League prohibited. Here we yeah, go. Yet another big play. Third down and three. Two tight ends in for the Bears. One setback. Payton. Long count. McMahon. Short drop. Complete. First down. Moorhead. To the 32-yard line. Washington on the coverage, number 51, had pretty good coverage, but Moorhead on the inside of him, the perfect pass for McMahon, it would be hard to stop that. That was a good observation, Tim. Uh, Washington could do almost no better than he did on that play, but the pass was perfect, and Moorhead made the catch and was just deep enough to get the first down. That was a key play in this football game. At their own 32-yard line, Chicago leading by a point. A lackluster performance in the first half against an inspired defensive job of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but the Bears have turned it around in the second half. Nonetheless, they cling to just a one-point lead. Suey. Suey breaks a tackle. Suey, close to the first down marker. John Holt finally stopped him, but he ran through Hugh Green and Ron Holmes, and a good effort by Matt Suey. First down, Bears. Well, they strung things out here as Hugh Green goes across, and you can see Suey uh, gets a good block from Peyton on Holmes, and he waits for his chance and turns up the field, and Hugh Green did not make the tackle that time. He had 11 tackles last week. Holmes was injured on the play. He has come out. Chris Lindstrom has gone into the ball game number 75, the second-year man from Boston University, played the USFL last year. This is Peyton cutting back, and is stopped on a fine defensive play. David Greenwood has been a presence here today in the secondary of the Buccaneers. The loss on the play. And we have a timeout on the field with a two-minute warning. Chicago 20, the Bucks 19. Mike Ditka pacing the sidelines of the Chicago Bears. It's tough to get to 5-0 in this league, even against an 0-4 team. Lehman Bennett hoping for victory number one. Time running out on him. The Bears have the football and the lead by a point. And a fine effort by his team today. They were ready to play. And something good can still happen. Two minutes is a long time. Second and 11. Play action fake. Deep for Galt. Complete to the 10-yard line. Willie Galt from Jim McMahon on second and 11. 
And they go all the way to the 10-yard line of 48-yard gain. Okay, the blitz was on. The linebackers are coming. McMahon just hit the ball. He saw it coming. He just threw the ball as far as he could, knowing golf speed, and it ends up being right on the dime as Holt and Curry on the tackle. An excellent pass by Jim McMahon under duress because you can see Hugh Green and Chris Washington are both bearing down on him. He just knew where Galt was going to be running on the post pattern through the ball. Never saw where it went or what happened until he heard the reaction of the crowd. And that is a backbreaker as far as the Buccaneers are concerned. The Bears now in command. At the 10-yard line, just short of the goal line is the 10-yard marker. So they're just about the 10-and-a-half-yard line. First down, Peyton hit behind the line and then barrels for about four yards off the initial contact from Hugh Green. Let's see where they spot the ball. Tampa Bay calls timeout wisely because they're down to 56 seconds. And uh, isn't it amazing how Peyton gets that extra two or three yards? He <laughs> took a hit from Hugh Green and wound up with a couple of three yards it out of sure it. There's uh, Lehman Bennett got to be a frustrated coach right now. They have to do one thing now, and the only thing they can do is try and strip the ball. Don't worry about tackling the man. Tackle the ball and try and knock it loose. That's Tampa Bay's only chance. You've got to give the Bears a lot of credit. Well, here's some credit to our executive producer, Terry O'Neill. Back in New York, senior producer Charles H. Milton III. And our producer on the site, David Michaels. Director Peter Bleckner. Associate producer Alan Brum, creator of our exciting opening footage today. Field technical manager John Pumo and his outstanding technical crew, and we thank them all, our usual stalwart bunch of technicians. And our camera crew and our videotape people who bring you all of those fine replays. We thank them for another job well done. And another job well done, apparently, by Mike Ditka. Five in a row, five and oh. He's won 21 of his last 28 regular season games. Now, that's a pretty good record. And he has a second and nine with 56 seconds remaining there inside the 10-yard line of Tampa Bay. And it was certainly an interesting football game from the point of view that the Bucks had the best of it in the first half. Took a 12-3 lead into the locker room. Turned out to be not enough, but not by much. And depending on what happens in the final 56, Peyton starts inside, goes outside, and he will score. What a run by Walter Payton. Did he fake Hugh Green 53 out? He still has it. He still has it. And in, in, I'll tell you, you ought to see what happens to Hugh Green. Matt Suey is out there in front blocking. You can't really see it from this angle, but he, he dipped inside and faked Hugh Green inside, and he got outside 53, and Hugh Green was just pounding the turf afterwards. You couldn't believe that he'd been faked out so bad. Here it comes now. And watch Hugh Green, 53, right there. He came inside, and then Peyton dipped to the outside, and that was it. Touchdown, Chicago. Walter Peyton with 52 seconds on the clock. Makes it 26 to 19, and Butler with the point after, 27 to 19. Well, they often say that good teams win the games in which they play badly. That certainly applied to the first half for Chicago today. And they will extend their unbeaten string to 5-0. and oh. The Tampa Bay Bucks can look forward to playing the unbeaten Los Angeles Rams next week at home. The Rams playing later today in their fifth game against Minnesota. Uh, in fact, Lehman Bennett has to play a whole string of top-flight teams the next six or seven games, and he's already going to be 0-5, and, and I'm sure he doesn't want to look forward to that because... Let's see who they play. They play the Rams, as you said, then Miami, then New England, the New York Giants, St. Louis Cardinals, the New York Jets. How does that grab you? <laughs> That's not too thrilling to look forward to, but he's got a five-year contract and a program that he believes in, and I, I think Lehman Bennett is a not only a, a quality coach, but a quality person. And again, it's hard to ask fans for patience, but if they do, I think he's going to do well here. And you know, you can't knock Steve DeBerg. He played a good game today. He sure did. He's got... Everybody talks about Steve Young in in reserve and when is Young going to be ready. Uh, DeBerg played a good game today. Played a very good 30 game. yards passing for DeBerg. Two touchdowns. The non-factor in this game was James Wilder. 
Peyton wound up with 63 yards rushing and two touchdowns scored on 16 carries. McMahon got it going in the second half, 14 of 17. The kickoff taken by Phil Freeman of the Bucks. Got to about the 19-yard line. Walter Payton, you know, the, 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 there's always something to say about this man because he continues to do things when you least expect it or he makes something happen in some unusual patented Payton way. I looked at a statistic of his. He's thrown nine passes in the National Football League career that he's had, distinguished so much by his running. Eight of those passes have been for touchdowns. <laughs> it's just, I mean, who else would have a number like that? I mean, it, he is just really an incredible athlete. He gave a little wave to the fans there. He's still the heart of this football team, even though there's a transition taking place, and people like McKinnon and Galt and the passing attack have made it much more well-rounded. He still is the heart of this football team at this at this point. First down for the Bucks at their own 20-yard line, 47 seconds left. Deep sideline pass is incomplete. Good coverage by Richardson on Theo Bell, number 83, the first time the ball's come his way today. And, you know, you stop and think, who came up with the big play? Willie Galt, once again. The Bears were in a situation where they had to control the ball three weeks in a row. Galt had that big one against Minnesota, the kickoff return last week, and then this long bomb, which put the game away. It was still anybody's game. If they stopped the Bears on that drive, uh, Tampa Bay would have had a chance to possibly kick a field goal. So Galt comes up with the big play. Only caught one pass, I think, today. One pass, but it was a biggie. 42 seconds left to play. We'll have a post-game show for you following our telecast. There's a pass from DeBerg, complete to Kevin House. And a first down for the Bucks at their 36-yard line. Frazier on the tackle, 16-yard gain. And uh, all of the other action around the NFL as it continues, you'll be able to get up-to-date on all of the events on our post-game show here on CBS Sports. So another frustrating afternoon for the Buccaneers and Steve DeBerg. Timeout on the field with those 33 seconds remaining. DeBerg's numbers now 23 of 40, 346 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. So he had himself a, a real good afternoon. There you see Jimmy Ray on crutches as he was uh, hit by a car here a couple of weeks back while he was out jogging from Buccaneer Park. And uh, they expected uh, he missed the two games, and, and Lehman Bennett said, yeah, it was a loss to not have your offensive coordinator there involved in your planning. And involved during the games and he said I had to kind of uh, bone up on uh, on making the play calls and signaling them in and so on and I hadn't been doing that well the Bears are going to be looking towards uh, the San Francisco 49ers as Mike Ditka will take his troops out west with a 5-0 and record shades of 1963 same kind of a situation Play underway, first down from the 35-yard line of the Bucks. DeBerg intended for House, incomplete. Coverage on him by the linebacker Rivera, number 59, and then Fensick arrived, number 45. Now, you may recall earlier in the game, the missed extra point, Ken Kaplan's high snap, Alan Risher, the holder, unable to haul it down. And Igwe Buike had to chase the ball back, and there was no opportunity for the point after, and that made it nine to nothing at that point instead of ten to nothing. And for much of the game until that final Bears score, uh, things hinged on the one-point differential. Second and ten. Nice try by Wilder to haul in that pass one-handed. <laughs> Pressure from Henry Wachter in the game for the Bears and Tyrone Keyes, 98. Wachter, number 70 on DeBerg, had released the ball a little quickly and was behind Wilder. Did the 49ers win that game? Are they still beating Atlanta? Well, let's find out. Here's the latest on 49ers in Atlanta. We have 38 to 17 for San Francisco with 348 to play. Montana passed to Dwight Clark in the fourth period. Flag down here on third and ten for the Buccaneers. So San Francisco will move to three and two. And be at home against Number the Bears 66. next week. Offense. Yarno offside or false start charged against Giorgiano. 
21 seconds remaining here at Tampa Stadium. Much of the crowd has dispersed. They had a big crowd here today, 54,000. There's that uh, 49er score. So the champs who have uh, gotten off a little uh, roughly Montana today took, uh, took it out on the four Falcons. Four touchdown passes for Joe Montana today. 49ers will be lying in wait. Candlestick Park next week. Third down and 15. That pass is intercepted by Leslie Frazier. <laughs> he lateraled it to Fensick. And Fensick looking to lateral it. He thinks this is the Stanford band play here. There it goes, too. <laughs> Dewerson. Dewerson got to the 34-yard line. One second left. Oh, what a way to end a football game. It did look like that California-Stanford game. That's what you call rubbing it in a little bit, wouldn't you? Well, you know, they could have maybe tried to go right to the end zone. That would have been rubbing it in more if they had gone into the end zone with it. So at least this way, nobody got down the field with the ball. With one second left on the clock, there'll have to be another play here as they try to sort things out. And the player is out on the field from both benches. But uh, the, the pass was clearly off target, whether it was a missed route or not, by the receiver. It was uh, one of the easier receptions that Leslie Frazier is going to have all season. Okay, the Bears have so many people down the field at DeBerg, you know, he's just, just kind of hoping for the best. And there is the uh, interception and then the lateral to Fensick, who wanted the lateral before this. He said, why should I get hit with one second to go in a game? Let somebody else get hit. <laughs> <laughs> Frazier's third interception of the season, and that's it. So the Chicago Bears rallied in the second half behind a hot performance by Jim McMahon, who started very coolly today. The cool one didn't have much at all in the first half, but in the second half, McMahon, 14 of 17, 227 yards and a touchdown, turned the game around for the Bears, and they came back after trailing 12-3 at the half to win it 27-19, and they are now 5-0 as Mike Ditka heads to the Bears locker room, thinking no doubt already about San Francisco next week. For Lehman Bennett, who had never lost four in a row, in his NFL coaching career, he's fallen to five in a row and has the Rams to contemplate next week. They are unbeaten going into their game this afternoon against Minnesota. So we can uh, only hope that uh, Lehman Bennett can keep the spirits up of his Buccaneers and get his program underway to bring them back. Remember, they have been a playoff team twice in their young 10-year history. And uh, I happen to believe Lehman Bennett is a man who can uh, make that happen for them again. But it has been Mike Ditka's day and Jim McMahon's day and Walter Payton's day and the rest of the Bears who moved to 5-0. and oh. So for Johnny Morris, this is Tim Ryan. And we're saying so long from Tampa Stadium where our...